Hi everyone. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to class. I am so excited that the lecture for today is holding and we are kicking off now. We are not wasting time. So I want us to give me some energy on the comment session. If you're here with me, I want to say something. Okay, Deborah, I can see you here with me already. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's beautiful. I think I need to turn my screen a bit. Okay, I hope you can still see me. Good evening, welcome. Please let them know in class that we have started. Today we have so many things to cover and we have to be very, very fast. We have to be very, very fast. We are discussing... In the Can you all hear me? All right, so um, like I said, we are discussing digital marketing. We are discussing how to sell to anyone, anytime, any day. We are also looking at um, emotional triggers of selling. We are also looking at important sell skills. Then sell skills we're supposed to have that help us sell our products and also phrases that we are to avoid. I want to make sure that the setup is okay. If you're still with me, let me hear you say something in the comment section. You are all welcome. Please let them know in class that we are here and we are starting right away. We have no time to waste, okay? Joy, I see you. You are welcome. Deborah, I see you as well. You are welcome. You're welcome to the second day of this class. We are not going to be wasting much time, so we have to start, okay? So if you're joining us, let us know where you're joining us from. Tell us your name, tell us where you're joining us from. And if you are in the GCC class, let us know your math number, your admission number. So we get to mark your attendance for you. I'm excited that we are all joining in today and we have a lot to learn, a whole lot to learn. I don't know if you should wait for others to join us. Hi, Pro Hi John, I see you as well. <laughs> Good evening to you too. Thank you so much for joining. Please let them know in class that we are live and that we are starting. We have limited time. Salome, I see you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Please let them know in class that we have started. Grace, I see you too. You're welcome. Amara. Amarachi, you're welcome. So like I said, we have five or six different things to cover today, so we have to be very, very fast. Chibese, I see you as well. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. I don't know why my screen is one side. All right, so I'm trying to see if I can correct the position of my screen so that it looks better um i hope you can all hear me if you can hear me say something in the comments room so we can kick off for tonight's live session okay i think the screen keeps All right. Can I be heard? If you can hear me, please in the comment section so I know I can be heard, please. 
if you can hear me say something on the comment section i want to be sure we are all on the same page we are starting immediately we are starting immediately say something on the comment section so i know we are together All right, so I think you speak now. Yes, we are good to go. So we are starting immediately. You're all welcome to class. I'm excited that we are here this evening. Uh, we are going to start immediately because we have a lot to cover. So we are looking at number one, introduction to digital marketing. We're also looking at emotional triggers of selling. We are looking at the secrets of selling to anyone, anytime, any day. We are looking at three most important sales skills. 10 sales secrets and then phrases to avoid in sales. So it's all encompassing and we're going to be dealing with a whole lot on that digital marketing, okay? So we're going to try as much as we can to be very fast so that if we finish up this class, today's um, lecture topics, we can get to start, um, we can also get to finish up, okay, we can also get to finish up yesterday's class that we couldn't finish up, how to choose our niche, okay? That's a very important topic that we all need to, learn so without further ado uh we are kicking off now once you stop hearing me please let me know once you have any challenge please let me know once you can't hear me let me know once um the network starts misbehaving also let me know in the comment section whatever challenge you're facing please do let me know and let me know on time so i, I would um come back and be on the same page with everybody okay so i'm excited and we are about starting the i was supposed to um, have a presentation for this but I had some hitches somewhere, and so the file was not ready. So I would send the file to us later on, either in class or on another class. I will still use the file. But today I'm going to, you're going to be seeing my face most of the time, okay? But I want to pay attention because there are so many things I'm going to be explaining today and making it clear to us, okay? I see you, Salome. I see you, Debbie. I see you, Chibeze. You're all welcome, and I'm glad you can hear me. That is beautiful. All right. So first, we are starting with introduction to digital marketing. Now, I would like to define marketing. Marketing is something that every single person ought to know. Let me see if I can get my screen on that particular slide. Um, understanding what marketing is. So marketing is something that every single person that is Every single person that is um, a copywriter should learn, okay? It's, it's something you need to have at the back of your mind because you're going to be selling products to people. Remember that yesterday we said that copywriting is basically selling, okay? You're selling with words. You're letting people buy a product. You're convincing people to buy a product using words. So that's basically... So that's basically what um, it is all about. So I'm trying to see if I can get the pages where we defined copy, where we define digital marketing. Just give me a few minutes, please, okay? All right, so first of all, we're going to start by defining what digital marketing is all about. Then I will let us know the five P's of marketing, okay? Now, I want us to pay attention because digital marketing is very important to every single copywriter. You're basically selling, and so you have to know the principles of selling have to know the psychology of selling you have to understand how you can convince people to buy a product so that is why you need the knowledge of marketing in order to be an effective copywriter so first you are going to define what digital marketing is all about and we're going to understand how to uh, the five p's of marketing and how to use it even as copywriters in writing our copy okay i'm just waiting for this file to quickly process i think yes i think it's here so i'll quickly add it to this screen so you can see it right hope you can see the screen so 
So that's what we are going to be considering today. But quickly, let's get to what marketing is all about, okay? So what is marketing? I hope you can still see me. Let me quickly adjust this so my face will also be on the screen. Okay, that is beautiful. That is better now. Okay. So quickly, let's define what marketing is all about. Okay, we already looked at what copywriting is yesterday. So let's look at what marketing is all about. So marketing is simply the process of exploring, creating, and delivering value to meet the needs of a target market in terms of goods and services, potentially including several things, which I'm going to be listing out. But there are basic things you need to understand in marketing from this definition I just gave. You're exploring, you're creating, and you're delivering value. And I had to put that value in capital letter because the emphasis of marketing is in value. You can't tell me that you are marketing or selling a product when you are not adding a value to anyone. You're not actually marketing. Marketing is about adding value. So you explore. Exploring means you get to understand what, um, you get to do your research to find out every information about the product you want to sell. And also, it involves you creating. So it can also be you creating a whole new product that is not in the market, okay? It can also be you creating something different and peculiar from what is obtainable there. And then you're delivering this value to meet the needs of a target market. So there is a portion where you are finding out the needs of the market, of the customers, of the clients. And then there is a portion of you delivering value to solve that problem they have. And that is basically what marketing is about. You're adding value to people's life. So it can either be a physical product you're selling, can also be a digital product you're selling. It can be a tangible product that can be felt, that can be held, can also be an intangible product, but it carries a whole lot of weight and you're adding value to people's life. So marketing is a process of exploring. You explore first, you create, and then you deliver value to meet the needs of a target market in terms of goods and services, okay? So goods, tangible, services, you're teaching, you're your educating, your helping out. These are services. They are not tangible goods. They are not things that can be held, but they are of great value. Then it potentially includes, number one, selecting a target audience, okay? Selecting a target audience. That is what marketing involves. And even as a copywriter, because you're writing a copy to sell to people, you have to find out who your target audience is. Who am I writing this copy to? Who is this copy meant for? Am I trying to sell to students? Am I trying to sell to doctors? Am I trying to sell to an accountant? Am I trying to sell to parents? Who are your target audience? It's going to define how you explain what the words you're going to use and how you write your copy. So marketing involves selecting a target audience. Okay, I want to sell this word and I want to sell to um, those of the high class, okay? Those, the, the very rich, okay, that can afford to pay me any amount of money to buy my product. Or you can say, I want to sell accessories, phone accessories, to those that cannot afford it. So I'm going to buy it at a very cheap rate. I'm going to buy it at a very cheap rate and sell them also at a very cheap rate, okay? So you define the target audience. Am I selling to high class, those that can afford anything? Am I selling to middle class, those that are somewhere in between? Am I selling to low class, those that are struggling and need financial assistance? And so I wouldn't want to give them um, um, a a high price that they cannot afford. So you select your target audience, okay? Number two, selection of certain attributes or themes to emphasize in advertising. So there's something that could be peculiar about the product you want to sell. You're identifying that theme. You're identifying um, the attributes, the importance of the product. What is a wristwatch going to do for someone who is going to walk? It's going to help the person keep track of time. So you're finding out the different attributes, what makes up that wristwatch, why would they prefer a chain wristwatch to a leather watch? You're finding out the different attributes of the products you're selling and to help you to make more emphasis on them when you're advertising. Now, thirdly, it involves operation of advertising campaigns. You're going to do what? Campaigns. You're going to run ads to sell that product. These are under marketing. Number four, attendance at trade shows and public events. People host events and people carry their goods and services to go and showcase. You buy a spot, you buy an area in the event in order for you to market your product, in order for people to come and see your product, you're showcasing it and that's also part of marketing. All these things are under marketing. Marketing also involves 
designing of products and packaging that is attractive towards to the buyers. So even content creation is part of marketing. I, arranging or packaging your product in such a way that it is attractive to people, okay? That is still under marketing. So you design a product and you package it in such a way that it's attractive to your customers or to your buyers. That is still what marketing. Now, under marketing, we also have defining the term of sale, such as the price, the discount, the warranty, the return policies. All these things are all under marketing. And as copywriters, you need to know it because these will make up the component of your brand, also the component of your copy. What is the price of the product? How do I make my offer? How do I sell and still make profits? Okay, how do I sell to my audience and still make profits? What is going to be the return policy? Is it um, once you've paid, your, it's, in, it's not refundable? Do I have to be the one to pay for the way bill? Do I have to? These are things you need to have an idea of because it's going to help you put up a beautiful copy that your client can relate with and you yourself can also relate with. Now, on the marketing, you also have product placement in media or with people believe to influence the different buying habits of others. So even social media, if social, placing your products on social media is part of what marketing, it's part of digital marketing. You that just come to your, let's say you just, you wrote a book and you just come to your WhatsApp page and you write, um, I wrote a book titled, sell, selling to anyone, anytime, any day. Okay. And I'm selling for 1000 Naira, get your copy now. That is marketing, okay? And these are things that are under marketing that would help us know what exactly are we doing and how do we put it in such a way that people see it presented when are convinced and persuaded to buy the product. Now, still under marketing, it has to do with agreement with retailers, with wholesalers, with distributors, and with resellers. That is all, these are all involved in marketing. And as copywriters, we find ourselves in that position where we are in between, we are the retailers. We are the, the we are the middlemen between the retailers and the clients. Okay, I I actually had a deal today that I was making with someone, and in that deal, I was more like the middleman. Okay, coming as a copywriter to sell a particular product to a particular audience, and the plan was I am going to be the one to talk with the client. We are going to decide on the amount of money that the person is going to pay. I'm going to pay you for your own product, and I'm going to take the profit from there. Just the way real estate works. Okay just the way affiliate marketing works, just the way all these businesses, many businesses operate that way. So you have retailers, you have um, wholesalers, you have distributors, and you can come in between as a copywriter to market this product as a retailer, okay? So this is also what I do personally. I have been doing that, and these are under marketing, and I'm doing that as a copywriter. It's going to help me make more sales and make more money. Then attempting to create awareness of loyalty to and positive feeling about a brand. So all these things are what under marketing. Social media platforms are places where people can go and you build your brand. You let people know you and like you for what you do, for your skill, for your charisma, for your, you know, maybe you're a comedian. And people get to know you and have positive feelings about you and your brand. It's also part of marketing and these are strategically positioned to help you make sales because once you're gathering people once you get people they can trust you and they can once they can trust you they can buy from you okay so all these things are under marketing okay all these things are under marketing so quickly We're going to be looking at the five P's of marketing, okay? Zinab, you're welcome. Everyone that have joined us so far, you are welcome. I hope you can all hear me loud and clear. I hope you can all hear me loud and clear. All right. So if you heard what I explained about marketing, I want you to drop something in the comment section. Tell me what you've heard about marketing, what's in about marketing. Just in one sentence, what is marketing, okay? I'm going to be projecting our answers on the screen. For those of us that are going to give beautiful answers, your answers should be projected on the screen for everyone to learn from, to share the lessons you have gotten. So this is a brief explanation of what marketing is about. And as copywriters, we are in there to do our own part as marketers as well. We are marketing, we are selling, and we are there to understand our customers, understand our clients, understand uh, whoever we are working with, be the middleman, make money for them, and also make money for ourselves, okay? So there are five P's in, in, in digital marketing, five P's in digital marketing. That's what we're going to talk about next. The first P is what? P products. 
There is a product, there is a people, there is a place, there is the price, and there is the promotion. Thank you so much, Debbie. I see what you wrote. Marketing involves delivering value. That word is so important. Value. You are delivering value to people. Thank you so much for this lesson. Please let's take note of that. You are giving value as a marketer. And also as a copywriter, that is what you're doing. Okay? All right. So five P's in digital marketing. The first P is what? Product. The first P is what? Product. You can't talk about marketing without talking about product. It is not possible. You must have a product that you're selling. You must have a product that you're giving. You must have a product that you are selling to people, whether online or offline. Okay? And that is what is involved in what? In marketing. So number one thing is what? The product. And the product can either be a digital product. It can be an ebook, It can be a video course. It can be an audio course. It can be an affiliate product. I enjoy affiliate so much. And the reason why I love affiliate so much is because you're starting, you're starting with zero capital and you're still earning so much money. I hope the light is not too much on my face. Okay. So you're starting with zero income and yet you're earning so much money. That's one thing I love about affiliate marketing. So these are also what? Um, products. So we are listening out the different products you can have. You can also have your imported products. People import products from outside Nigeria and sell. People also have digital training, like the one you're undergoing now is what is a digital training. Okay. So these are what products that you can sell. We can either be in form of goods, tangible things that people can see, it can be in form of what a service where you're just teaching, you're just training, you're giving them knowledge, you're educating. And these are what are products. And one thing you must understand is that your product needs to be solving a problem. If you want to be a good marketer, you must solve a problem. That is even how you should start marketing. That is how the concept should come to you. That first of all, what is the problem around me that I should solve? And this I'm saying to learn passes, especially to those who don't have a business at all, but you want to be a copywriter. You don't have any business, you don't have any product to sell, you don't have anything whatsoever. You just, probably you're just finishing school and you want something to start earning from. Number one thing you must know about marketing, about selling, about making money, about copywriting is that you need to solve what a problem. If you're solving problem for people, they can easily put their hand in their pores and pay you. But if you're just there to just do whatever, do what satisfies you, people are not going to pay you to do what satisfies you. No, they're going to pay you because you're solving a problem for them. So find a problem create a product around that problem that would help people and sell that product, okay? I am here solving a problem of helping you make money online. I'm here helping you solve the problem of understanding what copywriting is, having an extra skill added to your source of income, added to your skill, and also adding to your source of income. All these things are what problems that are being solved. So look around you as a copywriter. You don't have to wait for work to come to you. There is work everywhere. And as a copywriter, you're being trained to persuade people to do anything you want them to do. Anything whatever you want them to do. That is what you're here to learn. Training you to know how to convince people, persuade people to do anything. And by anything, I mean anything. Buy any product. Even if the product has been in the market and has not made any sale. You know what happened to Jesus in the Bible? For me, That Peter, they were hunting, they were hunting, and then hunting for fish. And they, they toyed all night. They did not catch any fish. But then Jesus Christ came, and what happened? All of a sudden, they have their net full of what? Fishes. And that is the same thing that copywriters are to do. Okay? You are to create, like, find, bring products that would solve problems, solve problems that people probably have a product that they've used over and over again or they've sold over and over again and they've not made any sale. They've toyed and toyed and toyed. Once you step in, you're now coming in to help boost that business. You're coming to help grow that business. You're coming to help persuade people everywhere, anywhere, everywhere, anyhow, through social media platform, through ads. You're convincing people to do what? To buy that product. I see you all. Welcome, Ifunanya. Thank you for joining. 
please drop your name, tell us where you're joining from, and drop your math number as well, okay? So number one thing that you must have a product. So if you're in my copywriting class and you don't have any product, first of all, let me start with those that have a product. Maybe you have a product that you're selling already. That is beautiful. Well done. Hold on to that product. You're going to learn how to convince people to buy that product before the end of this um, course, okay? You're going to learn it every single part of it now if you don't have a product at all you don't have any product at all to sell or to promote i have given you instances of products i can sell first of all find the problem around you then create a product around it either an ebook okay what are the problems that your friends are facing what are the problems that those around you are facing what are the problems that we have on social media what are the problems that people are facing in marriage their children Think, think outside the box and say, okay, because I'm in this area and these are the common problems that are seen in this area, I want to start selling this, okay? I want to start selling books. I want to start selling um, um, jewelry. I want to start selling. That is how most people start their business, okay? One of my friends, yes, two days ago, I was discussing with her. She sells, she's actually the one I bought these glasses from. Shout out to Timeless. If anyhow, anyhow, she gets to see this video, I'm giving a shout out to her. So Timeless is the person that I purchased this eyeglass from I think two days ago or three days ago, two days ago. So I was just having this random conversation with her and she was telling me how she started her business. How did she start her business? She was having eye problem and she needed a blue cut glass for the screen. Okay, it shares, it covers the eye. For those of us that use screen a lot, that uses um, our phone a lot to protect our eyes from the blue light, you buy, you need to get a blue cut eyeglass, like this one I have here with me, okay? So she was saying that she wanted to buy a glasses that would help her, that would protect her eyes. And she searched all through. She searched everywhere in the market where she lived, and she could not get. So she had to import from another state, from Lagos, okay? This was in Nigeria. From Lagos, she had to import the glass from Lagos, and it cost her a lot. And she knows that many people in her environment would definitely need a blue cut glass, a glass that will protect them from the rays of the of light from your system, from your phone. So that was how she started searching for a dealer. Who am I going to buy blue cut eyeglass from at a cheaper rate so I can sell to people? She found the problem and she decided to solve it. Now, another person, another of my friend that also sells books, that is how she started as well. She was in need of a book. She searched everywhere. She could not find the book. And finally, she bumped into the book. And she started to help other people that are probably finding it difficult to go to market to buy books. She just decided to bring it closer to students. And that's how she started her business. And now her book business is also booming. Okay? So look for a problem around you. Same thing with copywriting. There were several things that I've thought of doing. There are several businesses I've thought of doing. But I found out that less people have knowledge about copywriting. Less people have not... Um, less people have um, knowledge about copywriting, have less knowledge about how to boost their businesses and how to engage people, how to increase sales. And here I am solving a problem. So find a problem around you. As a copywriter, you won't learn this skill and that skill will just be dormant. You've, you're learning how to persuade people. And by the time you're done learning how to persuade people, don't just leave that information with you there. I am challenging you this evening. Don't leave this information you're going to get from this 14 days, approximately 13 days. The last day is our convocation and exam. But in those 13 days, don't just allow the information that you're going to get to be there. Use that information. Look around you. Which products can I promote? Which problem can I help solve? Go for it. Get that product, okay? You don't need to have a source of income. You don't need to have um, a capital to even start. I've listed a couple of products for us. You can start by writing an ebook, okay? Short ebook. I mean, people don't like long books these days. So you can just put together a 20 page book on how to, uh, what's, what's the common thing that will come to mind again? How to write an exam and get a distinction, okay? How to write an ebook. It could be a book. How to sell to anyone, anytime, any day. To be a book and you give it your you frame it and give it your own title, okay? Or whatever you know you're very good at, okay. What you've learned over the years, you can put it together and sell it at the cheapest price. Can you start with the least one thousand error? I mean, it's going to be easier for people to just pull out one thousand error to give you. Imagine that you just sit down for two days and put together every thought on let's say you 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 were once fat, okay, you once had weight. 
and then you started losing weight, started gymming, and then you lost, let's say, 5 kg in one month, okay? You can put a book together, how to lose 5 kg in one month, and you share your personal experience. Trust me, many people are going to buy. Many people are looking for how to lose weight, okay? So there is so much in you that you just don't mind there. And as a copywriter, you have to use your skill now and the potential, the things you've known over time to make money for yourself with zero capital. So you have a system or you have your phone, open your WPS, write the topic, how to lose 5 kg in, five, in, 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 in a month, personal from personal experience. So people even get to relate with you if it's your own story. Then you begin to type and write every single thing about the journey of your losing 5 kg. Sell it, put it together, there are, there are different sites that you can write ebooks, right? They can design an ebook, okay? Canva is there. If you are following me, if I hope all of us have subscribed to this channel because this is also part of the things we teach in the channel, okay? Yet yesterday I okay, this morning I posted a video on a tour around Canva app. Okay, so Canva is one app that can help you create any design at all you want to create, whether an ebook, whether a flyer, whether a thumbnail for your YouTube, whether YouTube videos whether blackboard lessons, whether you want to draw graph, whatever you want to do, Canva is a, a, a go-to for you, okay? It should be your, your easy to go to anytime, any day. So you can go to Canva, get a design, okay? Follow my trainings on Canva, so you also get to learn how to use Canva. Follow my trainings, okay? Learn how to use Canva. Take your ebook to Canva, get it designed, okay? Then sell it. You can post it on Amazon, you can post it on any site. You can also sell it on your social media platform using everything you're going to learn about copywriting, okay? And then make yourself. From there, you start building gradually. You can also look around you and see other businesses around you, and then you talk to them and tell them, um, as a copywriter, we want to help. Just pitch your business. Pitch. Let them know what you do and convince them. You write a copy for them. They get to pay you and you help promote their business. So number one is what? A product. So you can't be a copywriter and then there's no products you're selling. Copywriting is about sales, so there has to be what a product. Now, number two P of marketing is people. People, people, people. People are very important. Why are they important in marketing? I mean, you're selling to people, you're not selling to robots. Okay? You're selling to people, you're not selling to robots. So people are very, very important. Now, as a copywriter, you need to find where your people are. Where are the people that I need to sell to? As I'm saying this thing, I don't know all the businesses we are doing, you know the business you're doing. So just be relating everything I'm saying to the business you're doing and the area you're going to venture into, the area you're going to utilize this copywriting for, okay? So you know people, you know the people that need the products you're selling. You know the people that want the products you're selling. If you're selling a skincare product, you know that you're going to meet ladies of middle age or ladies of youths, young people. If you're selling uh, uh, crunch, um, clutches, if you're selling medical things for old people, you know that your class of people that are going to reach out to are old people or families of the old people, those that take care of them. So you need to find the people that need your products, the people that are going to patronize you, the people that can pull out money and buy your product. Now, as a copywriter and also as a marketer, you can find people that have interest in what you're doing in different platforms. You have your Facebook, you have your Instagram, you have your different websites, okay? You have Reddit, you have Naira Land. All these are different places where you can go and search for the people that need what you're selling. Let's say you want to make a research on haircuts, okay? You want to start a barbing salon, or let's say you want to buy a, a clipper. Now, if you go online and go to any of those platforms, you're going to search, okay? You can go to Reddit, you can go to Naira Land, you can go to Facebook forums and just type in anything at all that relates to your business. You're going to see groups coming out, okay? Different groups um, that discuss what you're actually searching for. That way you enter into those groups, you get to hear what they're discussing, you get to hear the questions they're asking, you get to hear their challenge. It's going to help you know how to package your own copy or package your own business, okay? So people are very, very important. Okay, I see you, Prince Chimezia, you're welcome. Thank you for the definition, I'll just project that. So people are very, very important, are very, very important in sales and in marketing.
people are very, very important. So wherever your people are, go there. Once you have a number of a, a good number of people, it's going to be easy for you to sell to them. And that is also why you need to be active on social media. If you really want to sell to people, you need people. So gather the audience, bring them together, do something intriguing, give them value, open a, 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 a social media page for your business, okay? If you're not taking your business online, take your business online. Open a social media page for your business, okay? Write the name. Define. Uh, we are still going to do that. I think on the 8th or 9th, we are going to be um, um, teaching us how to professionally set up your social media platform, okay? So go to your social media, set up your social media profile professionally that will look like a standard business, brand it very well, then start giving value in the social media platform. Give value. Let's say you're into health and you want to be a health copywriter. Start giving value about health. Start talking about how to brush your teeth in the morning, how to personal hygiene. Just, you know, the topics around what you're doing. Start teaching it. So just start giving value without asking for money, okay? By the time people are seeing that, wow, I'm getting so much information. I'm learning how to, what to eat in the morning, how to prepare this, how to, if you're into cooking and catering or nutrition, how to this and that. As they are gaining value, they are following you and you're building your audience. By the time you're selling a product, one product, it's going to be easy for them to just pay because you've given them so much value and they won't even feel cheated. They'll feel like they're even the ones cheating you because they've learned a lot from you without paying you. So when you now begin to sell your product, it's going to be easy for them to buy, okay? So gather people, go to places that people are, go to forums. These are where you write your copies, you place your copies, when you've written your copies. We're talking about marketing by the five, uh, oh, sorry, but by the by the four, the four. I think on the four we should be talking about the copy itself. But we are talking about everything around the copy. So now, if you find where the people are and your copy is ready, and your copy is ready, it's going to be easy for them to patronize you, okay? Because you're going to where they are. You're going to where people actually need you or need your product. Then number three P of copywriting is place, okay? You know you've identified the people that need your product. People that need it are the young people or the old people or students or doctors or affiliate marketers. What exactly are you selling? You have identified the people. Now you need to go to the place where they are. And that was what I was mentioning earlier. The Reddit, the Naira Land, go Google, um, Facebook groups. Different platforms are there for you where people gather together. Any of people are gathering. And they are discussing anything that has to do with your product. Make sure you're there, okay? Find those places. Find those groups. Enter those groups. Begin to give value to people. Begin to wow them. By the time you're giving them, you're commenting, making creative comments, they begin to, you know, they're just wondering, wow, who is this person that is speaking sense in this place? So they begin to follow you and you're bringing them together and forming your own community. It's going to be easy for you to sell to this ones, Okay. So number four is the price, okay? But before we continue with the price, I want to know in the comment section, what is the name of your business and what are you doing, okay? What business are you doing? What business are you selling? Now, if what product are you selling? Now, if you don't have any business, I want to say I don't have any business on the group chat because every, on the, on the comment section, please, because everything we are talking about here is about marketing, and it's for two categories, for people that already have a product they are selling, people that are already marketing, people that already have a product or a business, and for people that do not, okay? So I'm trying to make sure I balance it. So if you don't have a product, you're able to see, understand, to know how to get your product and sell. And if you have a product already, you can flow from there and see, understand how to sell and market. So let me hear your comments in the comment section. Do you have a business? That's the question. If you have a business, what is the name of your business? Someone could just connect with you here um, just by your comments right now. So tell us the name of your business. Tell us what you sell. And if you don't have any business, tell us you don't have any business and you would like to start a business or you would like to write copies for other businesses. So let me hear the energy. Let me receive the energy in the comment section while we continue, okay? All right. So while our comments are coming in, we are looking at the fourth P of copywriting and the fourth P of copywriting is what price. Okay. Price is very important. And also as copywriters, you need to learn how to make offers. Okay. You need to learn how to price. 
need to learn how to give offers and how to give your price and how to even give your own price your own how to price clients how to uh, how to set your own money how to set your own pay your own commission okay you need to learn how to not on the charge okay how to keep it stable that they get to still pay you and you're giving them the value much more than they are paying you so price is very important but one secret you must know about pricing is that you'd have to give more than you earn you have to give more value than people are paying for once you're giving more value than people are paying for it's going to be easy for them to pay you okay imagine the things that i am teaching us in this class we are having 14 days class you're having in course you're having one-on-one -on -one coaching you're having um, examination, you're having certificates, and just what you paid is 1,000 Naira. I mean, I am actually undercharging, but it is with a good intent, okay? So, yes, pricing is very, very important. You need to get to know how to price, how to give a bigger value, how to give greater value than what, you're off what people are offering you, and it's really going to be easy for you to make sales, okay? It's going to be much easier to make sales. So I notice that most sometimes, when I charge high, okay, when I say, okay, class is 5,000 Naira, I say 10,000 Naira, that people are going to take time, like they're, it's going to be a struggle for them to pay. But when you just put at a very comfortable price, like when you're targeting students, I like, you know that students, uh, not not every student is quite stable, okay, it's going to be easy for them to pull out 1,000 Naira and pay you for a particular product. So you need to learn how to balance it up, okay, especially when you understand your target audience. Who are you targeting? Who is this advertisement for? Are you targeting students? What are their economic status? So it helps you to know exactly how to price. Also, when you're writing a copy, when you're writing a copy for a product, okay, it helps you know how to make your offer. Who are these offers for? Will it benefit the low economic group? Will it benefit the high economic group? Will it benefit the middle economic group? You see people that they sell, let's say they are selling um, a... a a, a a lantern or let's say they are selling a phone okay it's easier for them to package that phone and sell the same phone and five hundred thousand naira to the rich okay to the high class the those that are, are topping in the society and they will pay for it but when they come to people of low economic status they are not going to sell the same phone at the same price i mean it's they are not even going to purchase it you really want to reach out to the low economic group especially if there are people around you then you have to bring down the price. Of course, not below the cost price, okay? You don't have to sell below your cost price. They have to be the cost price. They have to be your profits. So pricing is another important part of copywriting that helps copywriters know exactly how to package their copy, okay? To still make it affordable. Imagine that you finish writing a very beautiful copy and you're talking to students in a student environment, okay, let's say you can go to a state school, let's say you're in secondary school and you're in a state school, and you're talking to students who don't have any sort of income, and you finish writing, or let's say you can finish saying and persuading them, and your speech is so wonderful, and they really want to buy, because the way you explained your book, let's say you wrote a book and you wanted to sell it in school, you wrote a book and you finish convincing them how powerful the book is, what the book can do for you, and you finish using all the copywriting skills in you, you're going to learn in this class, and then you now come to your pricing may you tell them so the book is 15,000 naira and i'm going to give it out to you for let's say 8,000 naira okay for the first five people that are going to come now that's the beautiful offer that is the beautiful discount but trust me it might be difficult for secondary school children to pull out 8,000 naira on their own, most of them don't have it, okay? Of course, we still have the ones that do business in secondary school. So you need to understand your audience. Let's also assume that you are called upon to make a presentation, let's say a TED Talk, or you go for an international conference and you're standing before dignitaries. Of course, your pricing is going to be different. How you're going to package your product is going to be different. So pricing is a very important part in copywriting that you need to learn and you need to apply that effectively in your copy when you understand your audience, okay? That is why market research is very, very important. Okay, so let's see the comments that we are seeing in the comment section so far before we talk about the fifth P in digital marketing. All right, so David said, I don't have a business, okay? He said, I don't have a business. I have passion for email copywriting on Upwork. 
for foreign companies. Okay, that's beautiful. So David does not have a business, but he wants to do freelance copywriting. Definitely, we are touching that as well. I mean, freelance is one of the bulk of our class because on the 13th day of this class, we are dedicating it to talking about freelancing. Okay, I think 13th day of the 12th day, we are dedicating it to talk about freelancing. So that is beautiful. Um, Ifonaya Chuku said, yes, I do love sea kitchen and bakes. This is beautiful. Wow. We did in anything pastries and catering services. Wow, this is beautiful. Is this your Instagram handle? Please do have to post your Instagram handle so we get to follow you. Personally, I would love to follow you. I love kitchen things. I love baking. I, I want to watch videos. I want to watch videos that will teach me more how to bake and all those kitchen stuff. That is beautiful. So we see that Amy Flyer has a business. And for her now, she needs, I believe she needs copywriting to help her boost her catering services. So we want to know, Ifnaya, what is your social media platform? Which social media platform are you using for your business? Are you on Instagram? Are you on Facebook? Where are you? And um, what is your plan for copywriting? Do you want to use copywriting to boost your business, to make more sales in your business? Or you also want to still have your business and do freelance copywriting. Let me hear from you, okay? So Salome said, no, I don't have any business. Okay, that's beautiful. So Salome and David do not have any business, but David is specific. He wants to learn email copywriting. We are going to touch that as well. Salome, you are going to get your own niche, okay? So by the end of this class, they are going to be talking about niching. So by the end of this class, Salome, you should decide on which niche you want to venture into so that as the day keep progressing your mind is already fixed on one area and it's going to help you to make the best out of it and start learning in that area and start practicing in that area okay so if i am waiting for your response i need to know exactly how you want to use copywriting and your business okay are you using copywriting to boost your business or you want to have your business and still do freelance copywriting and if you have a, an instagram page for your business if I do let us know okay because we're going to monitor the growth that is part of the one-on-one -on -one coaching session i promised us we are going to monitor our growth for those of us that have instagram for those of us that have businesses already okay we are going to know what phase are we right now by the end of our class what is the phase that we are the new phase that we are by the time we are beginning to apply everything we are learning in the copywriting class we will see that there's going to be a remarkable change from where we are now today being the second day of this class and on the 14th day of the class. So we want to follow that progress and see how much you're able to learn and how much you're able to practice to grow your social media platform. So I'm still waiting for our responses. For those of us that are yet to respond, please let me know in the comment section. Do you have any business? What's the name of your business? And what is your, what, why are you learning copywriting? Are you learning to use it and boost your business? Or you want to do freelance copywriting? and to end from copywriting as an extra business. So let me hear our comments, all right? Thank you so much for those that have re responded. I should project the other responses as well. Okay, so the fifth P in digital marketing is promotion, okay? Promotion. We've talked about the product. We've talked about the people. That number one, I would also call it problem, okay? So I prefer to use the word problem than using product. So the problem can either be a product or a service, okay? So I'll use problem as number one, P. Number two, I'll use people. Number three, place. Number four, price. And number five, promotion. Now, promotion involves promoting your business. And that is also what is there in marketing. In marketing, you're promoting on social media platform. You're promoting your business to, your, to those around you through billboards, newspapers. That is your promotion. And that's the essence why we have the Facebook ads class in the copywriting class, okay? We are going to teach us how to run Facebook ads because that is what is going to help your lead and conversions, okay? So this is part of marketing as well. And as a copywriter, you should know how to run ads, okay? For your business, when you finish writing beautiful copy for a Facebook ad, and you don't know how to run the ad. You have a beautiful copy, but yet nobody's going to see that ad. And so it's not going to convert. It's not going to make money for you. So we are going to be teaching you how to run Facebook ads in one of the classes. So these are the five P's of digital marketing. Promotion is the last one. And it involves you promoting your business. Someone met me and she wanted to um, promote her business. Okay, She wanted me to write the copy and also run Facebook ads. And the time she met me was when I was just starting out as a copywriter. 
and I did not have any knowledge about Facebook ads. Okay, I didn't have any knowledge about running Facebook ads. So I was, I was, I was, I was acting or responding as though I did not know my stuff very well. So that is why, as a copywriter, I should also know how to run Facebook ads. I had to go to Joshua's YouTube channel, Joshua Mba, and watch one of his videos on Facebook ads. That was how I learned it, and I stay practicing. Okay, I have run Facebook ads, and I've had. With just a little amount of money, I've had leads. I've, I've had people respond. Many people respond. So I've practiced it at, at different points. I've known things that worked at some point and things that did not work. I have, and yes, the last set, the GCO2, we had to invite Joshua Mba to come and teach us how to run Facebook ads. And I'm going to invite him again to teach us how to run Facebook ads. I, which day again do we have Facebook ads on our, on our, I'll check it out and, and I'll check it out. We should be sometime ending of this week. Okay, I think end of this week. So we'll be inviting him as well to come and just how to run Facebook ads. So it's very important that you get to know how to run a Facebook ad. So when you're done writing a copy, okay, your copy for a client and they want to help them around an ad, you also know how to run the ad and make your copy effective and make the ad effective and generate leads for the business. Remember that they are going to trust what you're doing if it is generating. If your copy is generating sales, they will call you back to write another copy for another product. So that's why you must learn how to write the copy and how to run the ad so that you're generating leads and they are seeing that what you're doing is working. And as it's working, they are giving you more contracts, okay? So these are the five P's of copywriting of digital marketing and also copywriting, okay? So next up, we are going to be talking about the emotional triggers of selling. Now, I want us to pay attention to this particular class because that is the secret that every copywriter uses to make sales. This is a big secret that everyone, every copywriter needs to know. When I found out this secret, guys, it was so funny. I was laughing when I was in that class, when I was being taught. I was seriously laughing. I was like, wow, no wonder. No wonder people get to easily convince people because they know this secret, they know this trigger. You know, uh, when you find out the secret to someone's um to, to someone, it's going to be easy for you to just you know trigger them and and um waking them at some point. One of my friends was telling me, Oh, I know what triggers you. I'm like, no, 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 you don't. And just like that, he just raised up a topic. He knows that anytime he raises up that topic, I am triggered, no matter even if I'm tired. I must say something about that topic. And I was shocked. I was like, okay, okay, this is true. I didn't even know this about myself. So that is how it is with human beings. If you understand human psychology and know how we think, you can know how to trigger people to do anything, even in their weakest state, even when they are tired, even when they have been maybe so stubborn and they do not want to pay for that product. By the time you're touching these little buttons here and there, it's going to be easy for you to convince them and you're good, they're going to buy your product. So please, genius copywriters, pay attention to these 10 emotional triggers I'm going to be sharing with us. You're going to you need it in writing your copy. Number one emotional trigger is fear. Fear. Please take note of it. Write it down. By the end of this class, I'm going to ask you to list the 10 emotional triggers. I'm already giving you the question ahead of time. So write it down because one question you're going to answer at the end of this class is, list the 10 emotional triggers of selling okay so number one is what number one is fear now people are human beings are generally afraid okay fear is one thing that if you're a christian i believe you've known this that we always preach was we preach faith over fear because it is natural for everyone to be what afraid afraid of what people are afraid of the unknown okay their fear of losing out on a good deal they're afraid that they might not have money to, they might not buy, they might not have access to a particular product. So that is why you see free things or they are giving 10% discounts or they are giving and um, they are doing promo and people are rushing. They are afraid that if they don't buy that thing when that promo is going on, that they might not have it again and they might not, have, they might not want to pull out the bigger money to buy it at a non-promo price. So people are always afraid of losing from good deals. Okay. Fear of missing out that's number two type of fear now people are also fear of falling sick people are afraid of death people are afraid of going broke people are afraid of 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 losing their money of moving from hero towards to zero people are afraid of many things so whenever you're selling a product and you bring in that trigger you're going to touch a sensitive part that is going to make them want to listen to you 
So imagine that you're a health copywriter and then you come and you want to sell an antihypertensive drug, okay, to a pharmacist. So let's say you let's say you're a doctor, okay? You can apply this to as a doctor, or let's say you're a health copywriter and you want to write about hypertension, you want to convince people to come and check their blood pressure, their, their blood pressure, okay. You really want to convince them. Now you can use this emotional trigger of fear and you begin to tell them, do you know what is going to happen to you if your blood pressure is high? If it goes above this, you could have stroke, you could die, you could have this, you could have that. The same thing that happened to your father, that was why he died early. And you begin to give them those history that is going to put so much fear in them. And like, ah, they would, they would, they would definitely want to listen to you. Okay, so doctor, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? So people are afraid of death. People are afraid of falling sick. You tell them, okay, take um you need to buy oranges okay take one apple a day or buy oranges and buy banana and you're convincing them that this is going to make your heart pump very well it's going to give you more blood it's going to give you this it's going to give you that and you're pitching all that and putting fear in them fear that if they don't buy this product if they don't have this thing something bad is going to happen to them it's really a way of convincing people okay so you we normally utilize that as well Number two emotional trigger is desire to be known, okay, and recognized. People always want to be known. Sorry. People always want to be known. People always want to, you know, that prestige, okay? So by the time you're telling them that uh, I, I, I am the one that sold clothes for, for um, Mr. Chimo during their wedding, and if I sold clothes for you, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to be up on the same page where she is, blah 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 and you're trying to massage their ego that is a convincing power okay that is a persuasive power okay so let me say well i want to be a copywriter for other people's business because i before i get mine would love to venture into sales page copywriting that is beautiful and it's also specific i love this salome thank you for this response so salome does not have a business but she wants to Excuse me. So she wants to venture into sales page copywriting. That is beautiful. Hold on to that, Salome. By the time we get into sales page, uh, how to write a sales page copyright a copy by the fourth day of our, of our course, you're going to definitely learn a lot from that class. Okay. So that is beautiful. So number two, we said desire to be known and recognized. Okay. So that is why people would always want to buy an iPhone. Trust me, there is so much problem with iPhone. People have so much problem. Those that have iPhone, they have so much problem. They have different things that they cannot do with the iPhone or they cannot easily do, okay? That is more sophisticated, is more difficult. Transferring um, apps, um, cloud, the iCloud, the maintenance, the data, the... All those things are different issues with iPhone. But why would someone still want to buy iPhone for prestige? I mean, that's the latest thing. That is going to give them class, okay? That's going to give... That's why people buy Lamborghini. I mean, it's the same car that will drive you to the place you want to go to. Why spend so much money? It was for prestige, for class, for fame, to be recognized, to be known that I have the latest this, I have the latest that. And that is a sales secret an emotional trigger that you can always utilize, okay? So come to think of it, if you want to sell a particular product and you know this is going to make someone classy, it might be the very expensive product that will still do the same thing that other products that are cheaper would do. But then, because you want them to buy that particular product, you bring in prestige, you bring in class. It's going to make you look this is make, going to make you feel good. You'll be driving the same car as Barack Obama. You're going to be driving the same car as, as Dangote. You're going to have the same. Do you know that this is the same phone that these are emotional triggers? The same phone that Dangote uses. I saw him. I the one you you're just you're bringing information. That is why research is important. I will always say when you have information, when you've done your research, it's going to be easy for you to convince people. Okay. So you massage people's ego. And they can easily buy your product. Number three trigger that I can use is what is love. Is love. You will see a mother that comes to the to um to a a let's say a boutique, okay, to buy clothes. And then the daughter, she has finished buying the clothes she wants to buy you and even bought for the daughter. But then the daughter now points at one particular clothes or one particular shoe. 
that was probably that was not in the mother's budget. But because the child appointed it, the mother might say, no, 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 come, let's go draw. You as the, let's say you are the dealer, you are the salesperson there. And you just talk to the woman and say, ah, is your child now? Just buy it for her. You, she'll be happy. She'll do anything for you. Just, just do it for the love of your child. See, these soft, <laughs> these soft words can easily melt the woman's heart. And even though it was not in her plans, she would just want to buy it. So that's an emotional trigger. You can use love. Let the people write and say, do this for your country. Do this. If you watch movies, you know they use that a lot to convince people. Do this for your country. Be patriotic. Your country will never forget you for this. Or do this for your father. Or do this for your... All those are emotional triggers, okay? And they just bring that emotional sensation to people. And they just tend to do whatever you want them to do. So love is an emotional word to trigger. So for those of us that sell gifts, you can package it well for Valentine and say, buy this gift for your lover. Okay, that's why people sell sell out things very well during Valentine, during birthdays, during celebration. Because of what people are, are ready to buy for the sake of love. So you can use love to convince people, oh, come on now, your wife needs, your wife will adore this. And to show her that you truly love her buy this product for her, I bet you she's going to be great. In fact, she's going to jump up. She's going to, you're use you're painting the whole of this picture to trigger that love aspect of human beings, okay, of, of, of the man or the woman. So that's an emotional trigger that helps us sell as copywriters. And we incorporate it in our copy. We use it to convince people as we are writing, okay? Number four trigger is comfort, okay? Comfort. Let's say you are you want to make delivery people would always prefer to have you bring that into their doorstep it's only the low economy group that would want to take the don't worry i will trek they will tell you don't worry i will trek and come to your shop and pick it instead of you charging me extra you no know, when they there are people that normally have that sense that kind of sense that they they will, they will find it difficult to pull out they will prefer to go through the sun okay and it's, it's understandable. They are money. They cannot afford it. But generally speaking, human beings like comfort. So by the time you're promising them a home delivery or they are going to bring it at their doorstep, and that is why you're charging them to some, some amount of money, trust me, it's going to be easy for them to just accept. Okay, no problem. I want home delivery. They just want, people want comfort. They don't want to be stressed. They don't want, ladies like that, you know, I want to live the baby girl kind of life. So that helps you make sales. That helps you even add extra. Maybe the cost of transporting from where you are to the person's place is 400 naira. But because you're doing home delivery, can you say the person, okay, to and fro, you even double it, to and fro, um, 800 naira, okay, 1,000 naira. So let's add 200 naira extra. So ma, sa, 1,000 naira for delivery. And the person might just be willing to just pay it. So people like comfort. So that's the, another emotional trigger you can use to make yourselves okay all right so salami is asking i would i want to ask can can i venture into more than one type of copywriting yes of course salami you can venture into more than one type of copywriting but niching down helps you be recognized for a particular thing now someone like ronaldo the geo 80 okay who we call the goats i'll miss it rather i think messi yeah messi the both of them okay they are known for what both messi and ronaldo are known for what they are known sorry to football fans okay sorry sorry if i made a mistake who is the drew 80 now she is messi yeah messi is the good so what are they known known for messi and um ronaldo they are known for football but that's not the only game they play okay ronaldo plays i think i heard he plays basketball as well there are other games they play, but you don't know them in those games. Why? Because they're putting their energy into football and they made a name for themselves there. So I would prefer you you make a name for yourself in one particular in one particular branch of copywriting. Okay. So you can focus on just one, but it's okay if you want to do more than one. Especially now that you're starting. If you're not yet certain of what you want to do, you're not yet sure of your interest, okay. You can actually do more than one. Okay. Try this and try that. See the one that is paying you more. See the one that people are giving you positive feedbacks on. Oh, this is beautiful. Maybe it's a health copy copy you wrote and they love it. 
and I give you feedback and you write another one and it's a fashion copy and the person don't really like it, it might start making you know that I think you do very well in health copywriting than in fashion. So you can try many, you can even try email copywriting and also try landing page copywriting or direct response copywriting. You can try many of them now that you're starting until you find the one that you're comfortable with or the one that pays you more or the one that just comes easy to you, easily to you. Then you can now focus on it, okay? But another reason why I would encourage you to focus on one particular niche is because people might want to see the work you've done in the past. If I am a fashion um, brand, I have a fashion business, and I want to employ a copywriter to write a copy for my product, I'm not going to get a health copywriter to write because the person might not have any past history of writing a fashion copy. So the person might not have information about fashion. The person might not know anything about fashion. might not know anything about what I want to sell. The person might be more inclined to health. Do you get So I would want to look for a fashion copywriter who has written about fashion in the past and I can easily see the person's um, um, copies, okay, samples of his or her copies that are available. I can see that and I can um, decide if I want the person to work for me or not. Do you get it? So it's easy for them to just see what you've done in the past and then accept you and accept to work with you. But when you're dumbling from one to another and many of them, they're using different copies to build your portfolio it's not going to give you a clear picture of what you're excellent at okay so but as i said as you're starting try many of them until you finally find your feet if you're not yet sure of what you want to go into okay so um if if i said i want to go into copywriting to promote my business via art and great content and also interested in freelancing to add up the source of income okay this is beautiful that is beautiful so i believe you're already getting points from this on how to um get get um more audience how to uh, go out there and market your product on social media platform we are looking at marketing today and we've been talking about the emotional triggers i believe you're noting down these things and you're going to start applying by the time you're writing your next social media post you're going to pick out one emotional trigger and try to apply it and see if you're going to get more comments, if you're going to get more responses, if people are going to take more action than they ever took before, okay? And please, guys, I want to stop at this point to mention that if you're writing your copy, please make sure your copy is well arranged. Sorry, it's not part of the trigger, but this came to mind now, and I said I must mention, and I have to mention it before I forget. Make sure your copy is arranged. Many of us, we finish writing beautiful copies, sweet things, but they are not readable. They are clustered together. They're not well spaced. They're not well spaced out. I know when I used to write like that in 2013, 2014. Excuse me. Even up to 2015, I was writing like that. I would go to Facebook. I will just clog. I would write. I will have points to write. But the way I jump back now, looking at them, I even laugh at myself. The way I jump back the information together, it, it makes it difficult for the eyes to even read and understand. So space out your work, arrange your work, make it beautiful, make it look excellent. Do your punctuations well. If you're not a good, if you're not good with your punctuation, you're not good with your grammar, you're definitely going to turn off your clients, okay? I don't know where this fly is coming from. You're definitely going to turn off your clients. So make sure that, make sure that, sorry guys, make sure that you arrange your work and you arrange it very well. Make it attractive. Ask yourself, if it was me that someone wrote this thing for, will I love it? Will I appreciate it? We're going to write our first copy, like I said, on the fifth day. On that fifth day, I want to really see something beautiful, okay? If you've been writing cluster things, please learn how to space out your work. Learn how to arrange your work. Learn how to make it beautiful. So that from the first copy you're going to write in this class, I'm not even going to know that you've never written a copy before or I'm not even going to know that this is your first time trying it out. You're just going to be like your already a badass in it. So apply these principles, guys, please. Apply these principles. All right, so um, if I say yet to open up a second, a special page for it online, you're still using your personal account. Okay, so she's still using her personal account for her copywriting class, and that's, sorry, for her business, rather. It's like, respect yourself. She's still using her personal account. Okay, that's all right. So it depends on how far you want your business to go. If it's really a brand you want to grow and make a name with, okay, then you should think of opening a special page for it and growing it. Your personal account should be an account where 
You can post about your business, you can post about your fun time, your games, your hangouts, and all the other funny things to do with your life. But there should not be a mix of between your business page and your personal page. Because sometimes I just want to come to a business page and then see what are the samples of what this person has to do. And I don't want to I don't want it mixing up with other things that are not related with baking, other things that are not related with with the business you're doing. So to make it professional, to make it outstanding you need to have a page that people can always run to and see every single thing about your business, okay? All right, so we will talk about that more when we get to social media management and those topics. All right. Okay, but you do that before the end of this class. Okay, that's beautiful. Because when you, when you get the page, send it on the group chat, on the WhatsApp group chat, so we get to follow you as well. All right. Okay, guys. So, um, yeah. If you also have a social media page, if you also have a business that you are running and it's on social media, do well to post the link in class. I would love us to follow ourselves. I mean, that's how we're going to learn. That's how we're going to grow. That's how we're going to form this beautiful GCC family and help ourselves become better. So, do well to post your link, your social media link, on cl in class, guys. In class, post it in class, so we get to see it and follow you as well. Number four, number five, um, emotional trigger is self-development, okay? Self-development. Now, people love to read books. I'm going to rush through the remaining five very quickly, okay? So we get to finish up the other two topics as we are rounding off the class already. So self-improvement. People like to improve themselves. So when you bring in things like training, lose five kg in one month, read this book that will help you make more money, do this and do that, you're definitely get, catching their, their attention. So it's a trigger. Do this for yourself. People always want to be better. They always want to go. They always want more. That greed is in us. It's, it's just part of man, okay? We want to know more. We want to have more. So self-development is one trigger that you can use when you're selling a product. Use that as the reason why they should buy. Come on, buy it. Do this for yourself. It's going to help you to grow um, academically, it's going to help you to know more. It's going to help you to be outstanding. It's going to help you to stand out even above your contemporaries. You're going to pass the exam with an every other person because you hold on to this book. So it's a trigger. I just use that on an imaginary human being right now. <laughs> so a self improvement. For self improvement, people can buy things. So that's an emotional trigger you can use. Then the desire for power. Desire for power is another trigger you can use to sell products to people. People love to be in position. They want to be above others. They want to have power over everything. So you can use as an emotional trigger, depending on what you're selling, you can you can bring in that part, okay? For power, for, you know, to be known, for progress, to stand out, to be above others and all that. So I use that as a trigger. Now, number seven, necessity of life. There's something like food, something like water, something like electricity, something like housing. Make sure that you're using this trigger whenever you send anything that relates with this because it's an important thing, okay? You can't be selling house and just say, just buy a house, buy this house, buy this house. No, things in the way a person sees it as it is. It's the need, it's a necessity that you need this house. And you need this type of cotton. You need this type of this thing for your house. It's going to fit your house perfectly well. You need this type of bulb. You need the alumaco windows. You need this type of protector. Use it. Make them see the necessity. It's part of life. It's going to help them. It's going to preserve them. It's going to make their life more better. It's going to make their life better. It's going to make them comfortable. Okay? So it's an emotional trigger. Necessities of life. Use it. And you see that it convinces people more to buy a product now you also have addiction okay addiction addiction is an emotional trigger there are things that people can be addicted to and once they're addicted to it is they are going to always come back for it someone once said um, and told me that as a copywriter if you want to make more sales or as a marketer if you want to make more sales let your products become part of people's routine <laughs> that was quite funny and deep but i mean that made a whole lot of sense let your products become people's daily routine. And that means if it becomes daily, um, their daily routine, they are always going to come back for it. Trust me. They are always going to come back for it. Imagine the people that sell toothpaste. It's, a, it's part of people's everyday routine. So no matter what happens, toothpaste, 
or let's say oral B or sensodyne would never stop selling because people will always want buy toothpaste. They use it every single day. So even if other products are coming out, what they'll do is just be, you know, keep being in business, keep finding out what people need, keep improving their products. But it's something that people need every day. So make your products part of everyday people's routine, okay? Find a way to let them know that they need this in every day or they're going to be using it every day or it's just going to be part of their life. Just bring it in. Let them know that. Let them let it become people's routine, okay? Let it become something that you sell to them. You know, they're going to come back every two weeks to buy the same thing. They're going to come back every day or every year. Hold on to your clients as well, okay? Hold on to your clients as well. We'll, we'll come to talking about clients later on. So addiction is a trigger that you can use. When people are addicted to your product, when they love your product too much and they're always coming back for it, it can be a trigger to always make sales for that from that product. Number nine is people always buy products because they want to make a difference, okay? So that can be a trigger. You want to make a difference, you need this. You want to make a difference, you need that, okay? If you want to stand out, you need this. So to make a difference, people can buy a product just because they want to make a difference. Or you can just use that emotional trigger. Oh, come on. Buy this thing for this child. Buy it for the less privileged. Buy it for the next. Even if you're talking to someone that you know the person does not need a reading lamp. Like say you want to sell a reading lamp or an accessory. The person does not need it. You can bring in the emotional trigger of making a difference. Buy it for your friend. She's really going to appreciate it. Buy it for the motherless babies. Buy it for... That way, you are making you, you when you once you that trigger works, trust that person is going to buy it. And even if the person does not need it or does not want it, the person will go and give it to those that need it. So that's an emotional trigger. And I've seen someone use that on me several times, actually. I have a friend that, that does that a lot. I don't want to buy this product, I don't need it, I do not need it. But she will always say, oh, Buy it for your friend now. Your friend needs, needs it. she doesn't have the money, and she will be so convincing that sometimes it's quite difficult to resist. Just that like me, I've learned copywriting too, so I also know how to convince you to do what I want, or for me not to buy what I don't want to buy, or for me to buy what I want to buy. Okay, so that is the power of copywriting. We just learn how to persuade people. So you can use that trigger, even if someone never plans to buy the product. But think, even if the person is wanting this product that I'm selling, even if the person is not doing birthday, for even I that sells cake, every single day someone is doing birthday, every single day someone is celebrating something. So even if you have people around there and they're not celebrating anything, you need information. Get to know, okay, their friend is doing this. And you DM them. I, I heard your friend is having a birthday party. Um, Do cake for her now. Send cake for her. So that way... These things are informal, though. You're doing it informal. You're not writing a copy, but these are convincing. They are things that make you convince people to patronize. It's the money you need, whether it's formal or informal. Whether you're writing a formal copy, a formal copy, or you're doing it verbally, is still part of sales, okay? So whether you're writing it or typing it, okay, depending on who you're... If it's an informal friend, you can always make this comment the way I just made it. Do it for your friend. Just do this cake for your friend. You can do that. But if you're trying to pitch your business to high-paying clients or to maybe a company, you can even pitch to a company. You know a company that needs cake, okay, that probably they don't celebrate their staff. You can even introduce it and write to them. I'm just not so personal. I deal on cakes. I would, I would, I would, you just state your, your, this thing. I make cakes, beautiful cakes that taste so nice. And it would be nice if, the company decides to start celebrating their workers every single month or through a party for the workers every single month, I would gladly make the cakes available as a sound surprise. You're pitching your business and there is a way you package this information together. We're still going to, we're still going to talk about how to convince people using sales copy or using copies. We're still going to get the past where we are writing the copy. But these are just the ingredients. I'm giving us ideas on how to market. That's what this class is about. So you can pitch your business, you can pitch your sales there, and then just get to let them know that uh, you can start um, celebrating your workers and every month you bake cake. Okay, we bake cake, we bring for you, and then you get to celebrate your workers. So you pitch your business, even to people that don't need it. You do what? You paint the picture that they will make a difference. It will make a difference. Your work has to feel appreciated. And that will trigger them to think about it. And once they say yes to me, that's the contract you just signed up, you've just signed up for. Because every single month you're going to be the one supplying cakes for them. 
and they will be paying you for it. So come on, guys. You we all have to start thinking outside the box. We all have to start becoming creative. We all have to start thinking how do I how should I persuade people? That is copywriting for you, okay? So that is an emotional trigger that you can use. The idea to make a difference, okay? Number 10 is what greed. People always want to have more money, have more money. Forex traders, stock markets, people always want to have more. That's why people enter into betting. Please, I hope none of us are into betting. Avoid it. It's addictive and destroys a man. But greed has made people do several things and acquire many things that they don't even need. Many things they don't even, they're not supposed to have. So it's an emotional trigger that we can use to still make ourselves, okay? I know you want this. I know you need it. You still need more of this. Get this. It's good for you, for your prestige, for this. So you just use that to sell your product and get people to have more things that um have many of more things that you're selling okay so greed is a, an emotional trigger that it wants to touch that part of people <laughs> especially when they see that you're giving it at a very low price you see someone that has this product but because you're doing 50 percent discount they want to gather it now that you're doing 50 percent discount so they are ready to pay you for your products because there's a discount and because they want to have it all. So these are the 10 emotional triggers that you can use to sell. I hope you got 10 of them. And the question then comes to us students. What are the 10 emotional triggers of marketing that I mentioned today in class? What are the 10 emotional triggers? Let's go in the comment section. Let me begin to hear our comments, okay? Let me begin to hear our comments. Comments, comments, comments. List the 10 emotional triggers. You might not listen to them at the same time. You can list them one by one and descending while we get to see that. So we've talked about uh, marketing. We've introduced digital marketing, what marketing is, the five P's of marketing. We've talked about emotional triggers and how to sell. And then we are going to be looking at how to sell to anyone, anytime, any day, as quick as possible. So I will call this a night. So let me hear our comments on the comment section. What are the emotional triggers? I want to be sure that we are still together in this class. So which one do you remember? List them all out for me. Let me see. List them all out for me. And let me see. All right, so very quickly, while we are waiting for our comments, I just want to go through the three different skills you must have in marketing. I'll just list three of them and throw the two lights and go to the next thing. Three most important skills you must have. Number one, ability to empathize with your customers. Number two, ability to uncover the challenges and discover your prospects' pain points. And number three, ability to handle objections. Now, whether you're entering into freelance copywriting or you have a business that you want to promote, you need to have these special skills, these three skills. And number one is to empathize with your customers. They always say customers are right. That is true. But beyond them saying customers are right is us knowing that we have to be empathetic. Our customers are what? Human beings with emotion. So they might come and they begin to tell you all their problems. Oh, I bought this skincare product and God, it spoils my face. Don't just say, ha, 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 and that is it. No. Empathize with them. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry that you had to go through all this. Even begin to explain to them why what happened happened. It's because of the products you bought. It contains so and so thing. You begin to give them information. It contains so and so chemicals. That was why it burnt your skin. And that is why you must not use products that has that. You can start using products that have natural and organic components. They are good for the skin. They provide nutrients for the skin. They won't help your skin glow and flourish. So you're empathizing with them, but at the same time, you're pitching your business. You're telling them about your product and how it's going to make it different, how it's going to make what they went through, um, how, they're going to, how it's going to help them recover from, from what they went through Guys, these are skills you have. You need to have. Learn to empathize. Once you empathize with people, it helps you connect with them. They, they begin to like you. They begin to know that you're not just there because you want their money, but that you really care. Okay? Don't just go on social media and all you're doing is sell, sell, sell. Buy this, buy that, buy that. Empathize with people. Okay? Say things that make you connect with them. Even when you're writing your copy, say things that make them see themselves in you. 
that you relate to what they are going through. Okay, so imagine you want to write a copy and then you're starting it like this. Let's say you're writing, okay, I think we should start using cake since we have a business with us, we have someone with us that deals with cake. Okay, let's always use cake or let's try to use cake for the purpose of this class to run our examples. So let's say someone came and then they're having several complaints. Ah, someone baked cake for my wedding and people were complaining that it was, it was testing. The, the test was bad, the texture was bad, they could not eat it, and the person begins to complain to you several is as in so many problems. Now, as a cake, a baker, okay, this person is giving this complaint to remember you want to deal with this person's problem and also pitch your business and let this person buy your product. What are you going to do? Don't laugh at the person. Don't even watch the person. Don't even make the person feel bad for taking that decision to go and patronize whoever they patronize that spoils their, their day. What must you do? Empathize with them. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, sorry about that. I'm sorry that your day had to go this way. Don't worry. Encourage them. They can then begin to explain more about cakes. It happens that way because either the baker baked it a day before. The more you're giving that information, the more they know that you actually know what the problem is and you will not make such mistake. So if either the baker did not store it or did not add enough preservative or the baker did not add this and did not add that or because the baker added so much egg that made it so soft or so much butter that made it so soft. That was why it turned out that way. I'm really sorry about that, okay? So it would have been better if this is done, this is done, use this quantity of cake for this, use quantity of cake. And that is actually what we do in our business. We use the right proportion. In fact, we measure it and we give our customers exactly what we want. We did cake for so and so person, so and so day, so and so person, so and so day. And you can remember the picture of that wedding. You can remember the picture of that cake. Didn't you like the texture? Didn't you like what you saw? It was so beautiful and it was done by us, okay? Sorry about your loss, but we are definitely going to make it up for you. We are going to make you never remember your bad memories about cakes. We are going to give you the best cake. In fact, I'm going to give you a test, okay, before the day of your ceremony for you to test our cake. And I know you're going to be okay with it. And then we would take up the contract to do your ceremony cake or your birthday cake. So what have you done? You've empathized. You've connected with this person. You've told the person what the person... Um, what caused the problem the person had before and you've now pitched your business. Guys, that is how it's done. Okay, so you must have that skill. Always want to connect with your audience. Don't always like, okay, 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 no problem. I, I, will, I will do cake for you. I will do cake for you. The ceremony is going to be fine. I will do cake for you. This is the price that we are doing. We are selling a certain amount of money. Um, it's going to be different from the one you had before. No, no, no. You might just lose your, your, your clients by doing that. So empathize with your clients. Number two skill is that you must have the ability to uncover their challenges and discover their pain points. Don't just sell, don't just have a business because you want to have a business, you want to sell something. What problem are you solving? Once you identify the problem you're solving, it's going to be easy for you to convince someone because you know you're doing that person a favor. Your mindset is going to shift as a copywriter from thinking, most of us think that, okay, uh, because I'm asking this person for money, the person is doing me a favor. No, let our mindset be that we're actually doing people a favor. So it's going to help people know how you price, how you set your pricing, how much you charge people. Because your confidence is going to come high. Okay, your confidence is going to be, you know, it's going to be higher. You're going to know that, yes, it's not because I want your money. I know I need your money. <gasps> but it's not because I want your money, guy. The main thing here is that I am solving a problem for you. So you have to pay to get the problem solved, right? So you need to learn how to uncover push challenges. Once you find out the problem that your product is solving, it's really going to help you to convince people beyond reasonable doubts to patronize you, even though you have thousand and one um, counterparts even though you have thousand and one competitors okay and that is basically what i love doing i love finding out what my product can do that other products do not do i like finding out what a product i want to promote can do that other products do not do i go down to finding the chemicals i use to make the product i go down to finding out every single detail i do my research i get the information and it helps me to pitch my business right and convince people right okay so Problem statement, problem solution, these two goes hand in hand. Learn how to find out people's challenges. Learn how to ask questions. Don't be on a call with a client and throughout the call, you're just talking about your product. No, we are still going to teach us how to close deal. I think that's our class tomorrow. 
how to close deals, okay? That someone has called you and said, I want to do this, I want to do that, and you're trying to close it on the phone with the person. I'm tell you what you must do and what you must not do. Make sure you don't miss tomorrow's class, okay? By 8 p.m., we'll be here. So do not always be on the phone and you're saying, for 20 minutes, you're the one talking. When your client even called you, not even your airtime, probably your, airtime, your client's airtime, learn to listen, okay? Even when you go to the freelancing applications, many of them will tell you what they want you to write for them. Don't be in a hurry to start giving them, geez, oh, I can do this, I can do that. Listen. Excuse me. On those platforms, listen. What are your clients... Um, what do your clients want you to do? Yesterday, we mentioned one of the important things in copywriting, that one of the skills you must have is the ability to pay attention to details. We mentioned there's one of the things you must know or do is have the ability to what, pay attention to details. And that's the same thing we are talking about here. So or ability to uncover the challenges and the pain points of your clients. So learn to listen then to pay attention to this. So they are telling you, I want to write a copy about this. I want this to be there in the copy. I want to focus on um, on the product char char characteristics. I want to focus on the benefits of the product. This is what my product does. I want it to be so and so number of pages. They begin to give you details. Pay attention to those details. Find out the pain points. Find out the problem of your clients. What exactly do they want you to solve? Once you're able to find out the problem, it's going to be easy for you to give them a solution. Number three is that you must have the ability to handle objections. Objections. You have to be flexible. There are questions that your clients can ask you even before you ask them. But a good client, a good copywriter is going to know how to identify those objections and handle it before they ask them. For example, you know what they call frequently asked questions. Oh, someone is going to ask me um, why, um, what about my product is going to help them to clear their dark spots. What if I don't get my product delivered on that particular day I asked for it? What if it comes in two days after order? What if there are many questions that are going to be at the mind of your customers? Answer them. It makes it easy. For example, let's say you are selling a product that you want to deliver to Lagos. And you know that one of the problems that people have ordering products from a distance is that it takes time for it to land or all those um, hitches on the road or the product never gets to them and their money just goes like that. You know that this is the problem that people have with products and ordering for a product from far places. And you are trying to sell someone in a far place. Don't wait for the person to start asking or start complaining about the problems. Bring up the problem yourself and handle it. Third person, I know that there are issues with um, people have issues trusting people in far places because of um, transport, because of delivery, because of the charge, because of this. But in my company or in my own brand, we do not allow such, okay? We promise you three days, it's going to get to you three days. There won't be any um, losses. We will refund you if there's any loss at all or if there's any damage to the products you've ordered for. You begin to give them the answers before they even ask. So they know that, guy, this person is good, okay? Now, this brand actually means business and they can be trusted. So these are three important skills that you must know, that you must know and you must have as a copywriter. So I see your comments, Grace. He says, fear, desire to be known, love, comfort, self-development, desire for power, necessity of life, addiction, or daily routine, making a difference, greed. This is beautiful. Thank you so much for this update, Grace. Thank you so much. I, I'm happy that we are paying attention and we are really taking notes of these things, okay? So, guys, we are rounding up, and the last thing we're supposed to deal with is how to sell to anyone anytime any day if you're still here with me i want to hear your comments on the comment session say something on the comment session say hello say hi say i'm with you say right on just give me some vibes on the comment session so i know we are still together let me hear us let's go let's go let's go
let's go guys if you're still here i want to hear you say something in the comment section say ride on say go on say i'm with you say yes i can hear you say i'm following just say something i need energy here all right okay that is beautiful that is beautiful <laughs> Okay, so now we're looking at 10 cell, cells secrets, okay? 10 cells secrets. 10 cells secrets. We are looking at 10 cells secrets that you must know as a copywriter. They are secrets that you must know as a copywriter. Okay, I see you, Salome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, we are riding on. We are riding on. And we're about ending the class. So we are looking at 10 sales secrets. And after that, we look at quickly how to sell to someone anytime, any day. Okay. So number one secret is that you must learn to give. But some of the things I mentioned it earlier, so I'm just going to rush. Number one is give value in advance. Give offer, okay? Give value in advance. It's a sell secret. Before you start selling to people, make sure you're giving value. Don't just come out from the blues one day and you tell them, I am a writer. And I have written two books that will change your life. Buy now. Guys, you're going to lose them. You're not going to have anybody patronize you, Okay. But the first thing you must do is that you must give value. Just come innocently. Just come, you know, cool. Set up your profile and begin to give value to people. Begin to teach them what you know. Become an authority. Become an authority in that field. Let them know that you know your stuff. By the time they are listening to you, they know that you're making sense. One day, two days, one month, two months, you're giving them lots of value. They are learning. They are learning a lot from your page from your site they're learning a lot from you trust me it's going to be easy for you to sell to them now as a baker let's say you have um we have our sister here you have our friend if if that is that has a that is a baker okay she bakes she bakes cakes and the likes okay so let's say she opens her page today and then she starts selling she puts up the cake and starts saying i sell beautiful cakes at ten thousand naira and she just puts one picture i will see it and see that oh she just opened her page today one follower one picture um money is involved i will run i will certainly run that is how my people work okay they will certainly run see money up front they will run but let's assume she follows the right path and then if naya sets up her page okay puts on the professional page, a beautiful brand name, a beautiful picture, DM, beautiful profile. She puts up a beautiful name and puts up a beautiful description, okay? We're still going to talk about setting up our profiles. Now, if she has done all that and then she comes on her first pro, um, um, up, um, load, her first post on Instagram, and then she puts up, let's say, her logo, okay? And then introduces herself, introduces the business. Hi, this is Susan So Bakery. And we are here to offer you beautiful um, um, information, teach you a lot about baking, teach you about this. And she lists out the different benefits that I'm going to get following her. And she now asks, follow me to enjoy all this. Remember, she has not put anything money. She has not put anything selling. She has not put anything buy. She has told me that she's giving me value. I'm going to learn so much. I'm going to learn how to bake cake. I'm going to learn how to mix this and mix that. Wow, guys, I will be, okay, okay. If I'm her friend, even if I, I, let's say I know her and I'm her friend, okay, I'll easily connect, okay, I'll easily follow her, okay. This page is promising. They have some so things. Even though I've not seen, she has not done much, but for her to start up this way means this is someone that has a vision. She's not just here, the page is not just here to add to the extra pages. This one has vision. This one is visionary. So, after that, she then begins to add. Maybe she, the next supposed to be a beautiful cake, and she describes how the cake is made, or she describes the color of cakes. What does blue in cake signify? There are many things about cake. I'm not into cake, but I'm just giving you hints and ideas, okay? These are things that personally I would want to see if I'm opening a cake page. I see blue signifies this, and that is why the color of this is this, and it, it, it was used for a wedding ceremony. Don't you just like it? 
So she has given me an information about cakes and cake coloring and also asked me a question. I can say, wow, this is beautiful. I replied. So that way people just get to connect. Next stop, she's giving me information. Um, fondant icing is beautiful because you give me the advantage of fondant icing. That is the post, and I have learned that next time if I want to order for a cake, I'll preferably order for fondant because if if they if I want to transport it from a far place, it's not going to easily spoil. So personally, I've learned that one. So if she keeps building her platform like that and she just keeps giving information, by the time she's getting to 30 posts in 30 days, that's when she keeps it consistent and every single day she's saying it might not just be it might not be a long post. Sometimes we think it has to be a long post to be convincing, it might not be a short post. But she keeps it consistent every day. She's posting and giving me information about cake, baking cake. Trust me, by the next, by let's say after 30 days, when I, she has gained people's attention, she has given people information, she has much value on her post, she has engagement on her post. Let's say by the 31st day, she now introduces a bakery, a cooking class. And she introduces a cooking class. I would like to train five persons, the first five persons, on how to bake a beautiful cake guys 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 because she has given value before it's going to be easy for people to connect with her and register for the class okay so it won't just be someone coming out from the blues so give uh, give people value in advance sometimes you may think what if i finish giving all the information and then they don't get to register guy give give don't be don't hold back don't ever think that people are very lazy even though the information you're giving to so still not make them become good um bakers or caterers it will not make them become better than you no teaching what you know will not make people better than you it will even make you better because you want to learn more and answer their questions and trust me if it's coming from you is actually your own there they are listening to it they are picking maybe one lesson from each post whereas you've listed 10 lessons okay so people might just pick what they want at that point it will not make them have all the information you have it's not make them know more than you it's not make them better than you give people value it's actually going to make them attracted to you so when you now say um i am baking a cake and i'm saying that this they know that you know your stuff very well they might not even understand everything you're saying they will not understand all the technologies they might not even want to go and research more but because they know you're putting out value there and you're really into your thing you know your thing very well to be easy for them to patronize you really um if i actually are hoping that your your cake your your platform is set up so that you can start posting. I, I think I am since you you're the person that have given us an answer about your business. We have to start, you know, using more examples for you, so you begin to get ideas on how to grow your business. Okay, so really hope you start you note these things and begin to act on them. Okay, so number one, give value to people in advance. Number two, build trust. Okay, these are secrets that helps you sell. Build trust. Okay. Now, the sweet thing about us is that we are not just like any other person that opens the social media platform. As copywriters, we have enough information. Like, we know a lot about sales. We know a lot about marketing. We know a lot about persuasion. So, it's going to be easy for you as a copywriter to grow your audience faster than any other person that's just opening their business. That is just opening social media platform and just there. You as a copywriter would have remarkable results applying these things. So number two secret is that you have to build trust. Build the trust of your customers. Build the trust of your clients. Build the trust of your audience. Let them get to know you for who you are and what you do. Number three, don't be apologetic about selling, okay? Don't feel like you're doing people, that people are doing you, like it's, it's their money you're dragging from them. So you start begging them for their money. Don't be apologetic. Be confident about even if you know that you've not become excellent at what you do, still be confident in that little you know. Okay? Don't be apologetic about saying, oh, sorry that the cost of my goods are high. You fall words. Why are you doing that? Don't, if you used to do that before, please stop. Okay? Stop. Stop it. Really, stop it. Okay? So don't apologize about selling anything to anybody. They should, you should, they should be happy that they have you in their life. They should be happy that you're adding value to them. You are doing them a favor. Yes, they are paying for it, but you're doing them a favor. And in most cases, you're doing them much more favor because what they are paying cannot be equated to the knowledge you have or you're giving the knowledge you're giving them. So don't apologize. Be confident. That is why when you are selling and someone does not, after everything you've done for the person, after giving value, 
after all the things you've done and someone is still pricing you people will still price you and want to price you down as though they want to close down your business they want to make profit that will make you not even allow that get to you not even apologize to that person because you're giving value you're giving much more i will not apologize to anybody in my class right now for 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 anything because i won't apologize for having a class because i mean i'm having this class for you I'm spending my time here for you. I'm not getting paid talking like this. 1,000 Naira is just for one plate of food. But I am giving value. So I will confidently say, yes, I am doing this. I'm giving value to you. I know I'm doing you a favor, okay? I know I'm doing you a favor. And I'm giving value much more than you all paid for. So in the same vein, in your own business, don't be apologetic about selling. Don't, be, don't apologize that you're selling a certain, certain amount of money. Confidently say it. Say it. If it's 5K, I am charging 5k for this. And it's worth more. The price is not up. To, is what I'm giving you is worth more than the price. So that would help your clients also know that you're confident and you know your stuff. So there are secrets to sales. And as you remain consistent that way, they just get to know that uh, this is a good brand. This, this brand is well packaged. She knows her stuff. So don't be apologetic about selling. Don't make them feel uh, pity for you. Okay. Let them see that what you're doing is for them. You're doing them a favor. So number four, model what works, okay? Secrets to, sell, to sales, model what works. If there's a copy you'd ever write and that copy generates so much sales for you, note the secrets of that copy you wrote. What made it work for your audience? Maybe what worked for my audience might not be the same thing that worked for your audience. Maybe what worked for my audience when we start talking about writing a copy is the testimonials okay because there's a testimonial part remember yesterday when we talked about the components of copy i just gave us a a, a, a quick um, overview i mentioned testimonials proof these are proofs so prove my work for my audience but proof will not work for your audience okay what i work for your audience might be the call to action the way you package the call to action or might be the offer you're going to give so what works for your audience? Note it, okay? If there's a particular copy you ever write, and see that many people commented on it, that's why you need to learn how to analyze, make analysis as a business person, learn to sit down and think, learn to sit down and analyze what and what worked in this particular sales that I made. Why do more people buy this product than they bought in the last one I made? You get to analyze it and find out the hook, what caught their attention, what about this in I wrote made them reply or comment? What about it made them buy the product? Then take note of it and keep replicating it. Model what works. I was listening to a video. I'm still going to share that video because I hope I remember. I'm still going to share that video with us in class. This video I watched for about two hours. I was so glued to that class. And it was a man, um, a very, he's a well-known man, Robert, Robert something is his name. I will have to check that video again and send it to us. I mean, guys, I wasn't planning to watch that video that day, but starting that video, I could not stop. For two good hours, I was glued to that video. And he was trying to sell and pitch his business to an audience, okay? I think about 1,000 people. And he was talking to them about his product. Guys, you need to watch that video. How he broke down, he broke down every single thing about it. It's an, it's an app. I think it's an app he was trying to promotes okay for them to sign up on the app no a website yes for them to sign up on a website they don't a dfy website a done for you website where you just have everything about the website there the copies are already there the the whole design is already made and he just wanted people to just sign up on that website okay so how he took his time he broke down every single thing how um you have to get a designer to design a website, how you need to get a copywriter to write the copies for you in the website, how you need um, a technician, how you need this. You broke down every involvement and broke down how much you would have to pay if you are to employ each of these to design a beautiful website for you. Then he put all these things together and said, we have already set up this website for you, so you don't even have to do any of this. You don't have to get a copywriter you don't have to get a designer. You don't have to get a technician. All you have to do is just pay some, some amount of money, sign up on this website, and you have all these things. Now, that was how he pitched his business. First of all, what he even did was he broke down the different amount of money you would have to pay the designer. He mentioned it, that the copywriter is the person you're going to pay the most money, then you're going to pay the designer, then you're going to pay the technician, you're going to pay this, you're going to pay that. 
and he listed out all the prizes. So he now said, now that you have all this done for you, the price is not going to be at such and so amount of money, at a such and so um, price, it's going to be at such and so price. And that was more like 10 times lower than what you would have spent if you want to do your own website and you have to pay a copywriter, you have to pay this and you have to pay that. So going along that line, it was, he just more, like he just painted a clear picture of what you would pay on a normal and what he's actually asking you to pay. So the value of what you would have paid or what you would pay if you want to design a website yourself and what you're paying now, the disparity is there. So it was so convincing. I was like, wow. I will, I will post the link. Please, someone should remind me. I should post the link on the class group chat on WhatsApp. You all need to watch that video because it, it showed a high level of sales technique. Okay? The guy used high level of, and he made sales that day. He made, I was like, wow. And this, we are talking about $11, I think $11, $11,000, okay, for that to, to sign up. He talked, and that was, he's a copywriter, basically. That was the work of the copywriter he just did. He made that sale and he closed that deal easily. So, guys, you, you have to learn what works. You have to model it. You would have to do your homework. You really have to, have to sound convincing. The way you convince someone and then the person even start pitying yourself and like, why well, are you kidding me? You're even doing me a favor, guy. And they will patronize you, okay? So <laughs> you have to what? Learn to persuade, learn to talk. But then the point I was raising is that you have to model what works, okay? Model what works. If there are things that have worked on your page before and then people responded to that particular post, Find out why they responded and then replicate it again and again. Keep using that model until it stops selling. I mean, I heard this from Dan Locke. He was the one that said it. Is it Dan Locke? Yes. That you should keep doing it over and over again as long as it worked. Don't just leave it there. Use it again in the next copy. Try it again in the next copy. Keep trying it and keep trying it and it will keep working. You only stop using it if it stops working. If you use it and then it does not work anymore, that's when you have to stop. But as long as it's working, always use those models okay always repeat models that work number five secret is you have to do your homework i cannot overemphasize this i think next tomorrow we are going to be looking at research okay i think it's next tomorrow's class that we are going to be looking at market research market research is a compulsory part of the copywriting is the number one thing you must do after you've gotten your job, after you've gotten your work, the first thing you must do is to do your market research, do your homework. You need to find out more information about that product. And it's a secret to making sales. It's going to be easy for you to convince someone when you have information. Guys, information. If you're the type of person that does not listen to news, you don't listen to things, you have to start listening now because you need information to sell. You need information. So you're going to gather information. You're going to you're going to gather information, you're going to do your homework, and you're going to what, sell your product. So do your homework. That's very important. Number, then sit under that, know your customers. Know your customers very, very well. Know your customer, know their profile, know what works for them, know what they need, know what they do, and it will be able for you to penetrate their minds, convince them, and make your money. Sorry, I hope this light is not too bright. Please bear with me. All right, so number six, acquire three, the three most important skills in sales, which I already mentioned earlier, empathy, uncovering challenges, and ability to handle objections, okay? So that is number six secrets. Number seven, demonstrate what you sell. Show samples, pictures work, okay? In as much as, yes, we say copyright is about sales and prints, like Dan Lok defined it. Yes, but copywriting goes beyond the words. It goes beyond the words also, but the action, act. So I am selling a product and I am demonstrating what I am selling. It's going to sound more convincing. Let's say I want to sell a reading touch, okay? I have this touch here with me now. And I want to sell it to students. I won't just come and write, buy a reading touch. It's going to do this for you. It's going to help you study and prepare for your exams. It's going to do this. I would also have to bring the sample of it and show you the shape and show you how beautiful it is and open it and demonstrate it and turn it on. Sorry if it flashes on your eyes. And turn it on. Sorry for that. 
<laughs> I'm demonstrating the product I'm selling. So and turn it on and show you how beautiful this thing is. Okay. You know, most people say seeing is what believing. So that is why you'd have a social media platform. So use your pictures, pictures of the works you've done before. For example, uh, if I had a bakes, you get your what your cake and use it after writing a beautiful copy. Don't just think that the copy is enough. No. Most times not even attract for first, not even the headline. Even if you have a beautiful headline, what might attract them is just the picture you're going to post. Then they can now pay attention to whatever you're writing. Okay? Yes, then I'll be still live here. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. All right, so demonstrate what, what you sell, okay? That's the secret to selling. Once you're demonstrating, it's going to be easy for you. I found out that the video I did for this class brought more sales than the write-up I did. Guys, and I just knew, I just knew that, okay. From the both the the advertisement I made for this class, the written ones, the video I made, the video worked more than the write up itself. So the video is more like a demonstration, which you must demonstrate. And what copywriters do, we also I, I mentioned yesterday that video scripting is also part of our work as copywriters. I had to script down what I wanted to say in 30 seconds, okay? And that's what copywriters do. The right words I'm supposed to use, how I want to start the video, what I want to say at the end, the call to action, how I want people to sign up, okay? So it's part of what we do as copywriters. So don't just think it's just writing alone. We also what to also videos. So demonstrate it, demonstrate in a video. That's why you have to learn more about content creation, okay? Copywriters are also content creators. So demonstrate what you sell. Then number eight, don't, people don't buy products and services, they buy stories, okay? People don't just buy, they might know that, yes, we didn't laugh now, we've been, been seeing it in the market before. But if you have a story behind it, it's going to sound more convincing, oh wow. This reading lamp has been here for the past five years and it has really helped me to study. I was about writing an examination, a medical examination in 2020, in 2015. And then I bought this reading lamp that two days to the examination day, it spoils, okay? And I could not, because of where our school is, could not have access to buying a new reading lamp. But then all of a sudden, I finally finished my examination and then I bought this written lamp and it has been here for five years. Now, this story is going to trigger people to what to listen. So they're not going to buy this lamp now because it's a lamp, okay? Because I say, buy a lamp, buy a lamp, buy a lamp. They will buy because I just gave a story, my personal story that I've used this lamp for five years and it's been working. Guys, I've not actually used this lamp for five years. Or this lamp is actually strong, it lasts. <laughs> Anyway, so it, it's a story that I just sold to them. So it's going to look more real to them because I just sold my story to them, okay? I just sold my story to them. So story works all the time, and that's one of the secrets of selling. Story writing is one thing that copywriters use all the time, all the time. So learn to use stories, okay? There is power in storytelling. So learn to use stories. People don't buy your products and services just because they want to buy. They also buy, they buy your story. They buy the story behind whatever you're selling, okay? Now, the ninth point, the ninth secret is flip the script to juicy benefits. Flip the script to juicy benefits. We're about rounding off. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry about your phone, okay? Sorry about that. But the plan was 8 to 10, and this is 10, okay? So we're rounding off already. So flip the, the, the script to juicy benefits. And what do I mean? Don't always focus on the features of your product. My product is five, the, my cake is 13 by 12 feet high. Nobody cares about that. My cake is white in color. Nobody cares about that. But what's the benefits? What am I going to gain by eating your cake, okay? So that is going to sell more than just the features. So convert the, whatever, whenever you want to sell, find out the benefits of that product and it's going to help you towards to sell. Now, number 10 is you have to avoid these nine phrases in, in, in copywriting, in selling. You have to avoid these nine phrases. 
Number one, avoid saying to be honest with you or to be frank with you or trust me. Avoid saying these words. Avoid saying sorry to bother you. No, you don't need to be sorry about anything. Do not bother them. You are not bothering them either. You're helping them. So avoid these words. Avoid saying sorry to bother you. Avoid saying, oh, guy, I just wanted to follow up. I know if you still want to buy the product, avoid that. Just strike up a normal conversation and talk with the person normally. Hi, how are you doing today? We are still selling this and this and this and it's available. That is it. Don't say I want to follow up or I just want to. People don't like to be reminded that you're following them up again to buy something from you. No, just strike a normal conversation and in between the conversation, you can now chip it in and now say whatever you wanted to say. Avoid using the word buy, okay? Rather than saying buy, you can say, would you like to go home with this laptop? <laughs> if I hear that, why would I say yes? I'll say yes. Then you can now say, okay, so let's let's remove the bills out of the way or let's remove the, the money out of the way. So by that, I mean pay your money so that you can carry the laptop and go home. But then avoid using the word buy. People just hate hearing that word buy. It reminds them that they're going to pull out money and they're going to give you. So avoid saying buy. Buy this phone. Buy this car. If you tell someone, wouldn't you love to own a car? You're actually saying, wouldn't you love to buy a car? But you're saying own. And that word own makes it totally different. Yes, I would love to own a car. Because the person can't easily say, no, I will not want to own a car. They would rather say, yes, I want to own a car. So by that, it's easy for you to then say, okay, so why don't we just take, take care of the bills so that you can go home with this car, okay? You can go home with this laptop. You can go home with this pen. You can go home with this wristwatch. So that makes it more conversational and more friendly than saying, don't you want to buy? You can put them off. Don't you want to own this? Yes, I would love to own it. And you're already getting a yes from them. So it's easier to get a yes that way when you say bye all right okay then contract avoid using the word contract okay let's sign the contract let's try and come no you can just say let's take care of the paperwork okay let's get the paperwork out of the way so that means we have to do the contract sign the contract so we can all go home or you carry your product i go home all right so avoid using the word contract rather you say um, let's take care of the paperwork, okay? Let's get the paperwork out of the way. That sounds more better and friendly. All right. So, because contract makes makes it sound like um, you're you're tying them down to something, or you're <laughs> you're about entering this blood covenant or something. So it just sounds so you no know, so wrong. So avoid using those words those words and selling. Then number seven, avoid using, I haven't heard back from you. Avoid using that. I mentioned just following up. Avoid using it. Avoid saying, I haven't heard back from you. Avoid saying individual, the individual. We don't use that word. Use, rather use you, okay? You. Casual words. Don't frame it as though it's an unknown person you're talking about. If you're talking to your client, let it be that conversation that makes them feel your involved you're with them you're into them okay you're yeah you're, you're, you're together you're all on the same page then avoid using the word we are better than don't ever use the word we are better than this company we are better than techno we are better than nokia buy samsung we are better than or buy iphone we are better than no never use that word okay in other words you have competitors but don't always paint that picture that you have a rival okay or you're fighting with somebody or you're competing with someone. Yes, you have competitors, but let that not paint the picture. Don't paint that picture to your clients, okay? Just tell them what makes your product good, what makes your product stand out, what makes your product beautiful. Do not compare yourself. Do not say, I am better than, okay? Tell them what your product has to offer, and they'll be willing. Excuse me, sorry. And they will definitely be willing to pay for that product, okay? So these are the 10 sales secrets that you must um, apply in order for you to increase sales. It's going to help you as a copywriter in writing your copies. It's going to help you to increase your sales. It's going to really, really help you. All right. So do you have questions? Let me hear some of the comments. On. Any question before we call it a nine? Now, also, as I'm waiting for our questions, there are nine. There are nine do's and don'ts i would have wanted, wanted us to talk about but i think i would have to postpone that as well um yesterday we did not finish up um 
our class. But I think today we've looked at the don'ts, okay? What you should not do in cells. Um, I, I think tomorrow I will now take the do's, what you have to do. We'll mend it together with the topics for tomorrow, okay? Then for niching, okay, let me just try a little light on that. Let me just give explain quickly to us what niching down means, okay? So I said you'd have to choose your niche. You have to find out what you want to do and where you want to venture into. And that's very important, as I explained earlier, because it helps you become a professional in that area and people get to know you for it. So now, how do you choose your niche? First of all, identify what you like doing, okay? Identify what you like doing. Ask yourself, what do I like doing? What comes to me easily? What do I do? And then I feel, what do I know? Okay, do I know more about um, um, health? Do I know more about fashion? Do I know more about football? Do I know more about cakes and baking? Do I know more about relationship? Do I know more about um, people getting confidence, public speaking? What do I like doing, okay? Now, when you find out what you like doing, it will not help you come down to choosing which particular niche to focus in. Do I want to focus in health copywriting? I would have loved to read and um, tell us the 20 um, best niches the 20 best niches that you can venture into, okay? The 20 profitable niches, okay? So let me see if I'll quickly run through that, okay? So first question you ask yourself, what do I like doing? What comes to me with ease? What can I do for a period of time? And it just I can just wake up and then I can talk about it. Can I talk about health? Can I talk about public speaking? Can I talk about inferiority complex? Can I talk about pets? Can I talk about money and business? Can I talk about self-development easily? Can I talk about technology, travels, and women health, weight loss, food, sex? Can I talk about relationship? Can I talk about fashion? Can I talk about um, um, uh, uh, what is that? sexual abuse? Can I talk about beauty? Can I talk about... Can I be an advocate? What exactly do I like to talk about? Um, do I love religion, education, DIY, snacking, education, universities, fashion, beauty, skincare products? What exactly comes to me with ease? So find that thing out. Then it helps you now focus on it. Now, number two is that you can also then channel your energy to becoming either a direct response copyright. I mentioned a few of them yesterday. It could be sales page copywriter. It could be website copywriter. It could be blog copywriter. It could be email copywriter, okay? It could be any of the things we mentioned yesterday. So decide, do I want to just focus on emails? Or you can also decide, I want to be a health copywriter, but I want to do any kind, okay? A health copywriter that can write email copy, that can write landing page, I can write websites and um, copies. I can write um, sales copy. I can even write blog posts. I can write anything at all, anywhere at all you want me to write anything about health. I am willing to write it. So that can be one of the words areas, one of the things. Yes, Zainab, the replay is going to be available for students of the class. You can always come back to replace. If your battery is low, you can, if you're still here with us, you can just shut it down, then come back and finish up, okay? All right, so drop your question. I'm waiting for our question so we can call it a night. So you can decide to niche down on that. Then you can also decide to be a brand copywriter that would have his or her brand. You can decide to, to be a freelance copywriter that will just work for freelance companies, uh, that will work on freelance sites. You can decide to be a corporate copywriter that will work for an organization that would have to employ you and you have to do the work for them and they have to place you on salary. You can also decide to be a corporate body, a, a corporate, either corporate or freelance or brand copywriter, whichever one. So you then decide, okay? So you, but you need to niche down, okay? And niche down on time. Like I said, you can start by freelancing. You can start by trying different other type of copywriters, you know, the one that suits you most. But then over, over time, just niche down and find a fit in one and make a name for yourself in one, okay? So the 16 profitable niches or rather 20 profitable niches are financial, um, you can write on finance, development, you can write on information and publications, okay? You can write on e-commerce, okay? You can have an interest in e-commerce, can have an interest in technology, travels, men's health, men's health, weight loss, 
on sex on baseline relationship can can be public relation okay can be of interest these are the ones that make money these days because these are things that people are interested in these ones i'm listing are the very profitable niches then you have your passion you have your beauty you have education you have religion you have diys who want to know how to do things themselves do it yourself can that teach them how to fix this how to fix that i mean doesn't you like that a lot i believe yeah i know that so you can just go into that and do videos on that or do your write-ups on that or write copies on that area pets as well these are the things that are doing very well but not in nigeria anyway i think it's actually becoming more common in nigeria as well but mostly people in the white con in the white people uk usa canada and the rest of them they do very well with pets okay so but i think it's coming down to nigeria as well so if that's your interest cannot actually be a copyright that writes more about that they actually have sites like different sites that that deal with pets they just want copies on pets and people are actually flooding that side and making the money they also have healthy snack online education softwares and the rest of them so these are 20 different niches that pay very very well okay so you can decide to niche down to anyone as time goes on but you can also start first as what a freelancer or start by writing for companies around you and people around you okay so there is this final phrase i want us to end with tonight okay and i want you to know sit down this phrase i'm about to say i want you to note it down note it down paste it write it do not forget it okay always bear that in mind okay before we get into that um salome is asking a question so when a copywriter write down an article to convince his customers and maybe the customers are this stubborn type in other words there was no much else are they still going to be paid a copywriter writes down an article to convince the customers and maybe the customers are their stubborn type in their words are they going to be paid okay so let me thank you for this question a very good question but then i would want to tell you that as a copywriter you are supposed to permeate every single heart whether the stubborn type or whether the easy type of course you not get to a um, hundred percent of your customers but as a copywriter you definitely have to convert that's what i'm saying we have such power we are very powerful if you know your skill very very well if you master what you do very very well copywriters are very very powerful so there is no how you apply any of the i told i mentioned the different emotional triggers that you can use to make sales there is no how believe me salome there is no how you use any of this um skills any of this triggers sorry i need to plug in my phone there is no how you're going to use any of these triggers and you will not make sales okay there is no how even to the most stubborn person even to those that don't have money you there's no how this trigger will not work for them okay any of this trigger so that is why i will encourage you sometimes you write a particular copy and then we get tired like we just write one copy and we post it twice on a social media platform and we're really tired like maybe people we just got one response or zero response and you give up sometimes it's not the first most times it's not the first advert you write out that or you send out or the first copy you send out that is going to convert people sometimes need to see things three times four times five times before they can think of patronizing you okay so never assume that the first copy sometimes i write the first copy and then whatever i'm posting i know that okay it's just my first copy i'm writing it out i'm sending it out if you convert that's fine but people need to see things around that's why people keep repeating ads you see this ad today you see it tomorrow you see it next tomorrow by the time you're seeing it for the fourth time you would then want to click it okay so that is human psychology and that's one thing about selling i i don't know i don't know why i forgot to mention that but it's very important to note your first advert might not convert as much as because people always need to see things several times before they gain interest in it people have many things bothering them a lot of times they are seeing them it might be that their interest is not in buying anything jewelry maybe that's not their problem but by the time they're seeing for the fifth time and they just keep admiring it first time second time third time by the fifth time it's okay let me just find out the price let me just start up this person and know what's up okay so some people have seen that happen several times they'll see your your post they'll not say anything by the time you're getting to two days to end of advert that's when people that have been seeing it since you know they've been seeing it since that's when they're not start chatting up i want to register i want to do this so it happens okay so no matter how stubborn a client can be make sure you're applying these different principles this might work for them this trigger might work for them fear might work for them today 
tomorrow love will work for them another day prestige will work for them another day addition will work for them different triggers can work for them at different times so just make sure you're applying every single thing it's only when you've done everything possible and then they're not responding then you now say they are stubborn but you will never do any of this you will not do all these things and then you not get responses okay so basically you would always come back as long as you keep posting again and again keep reminding people again and again keep posting again and again okay then you're asking are they still going to pay you if you're doing freelancing freelancing does not have to do with conversion okay in freelancing it's not conversion that is going to make them pay you they are going to pay you based on the work you do okay what conversion is going to just help them do is either come back to ask you to do another job for them or ask you or not come back for you if your copy converts okay and they like your copy and it made them more money they will come back and then see access to write another copy for them. That's just it. But in freelancing, your agreement is going to be based on, okay, I'm writing this copy for you and I need, and you're going to pay me some, some amount of money. That's what I charge to write an email copy. Well, that's what I write. I charge to write a sequence of email copies or a direct response copy. Or that's what I charge for this. That's what I charge for that. So you're the one putting your rates. You're putting your price for the copy. What they do with the copy is no longer your business, okay? So you write the copy and send to them and they get to pay you. But because you have to get more sales, you want them to gain your, you want to gain their trust, you want them to come back and patronize you again, you have to make sure you're putting your best, write a beautiful copy so that whenever they go with it or whatever they are doing with it, it's to convert for their business and they would always be willing to come back, okay? So most times that is how the rate is being set. You're the one that says the price and you're, they are paying you because of the copy you're writing. They're not paying you based on conversion, okay? They are paying you because of the copy you are writing. So I just said, if you're a starter, if you're starting, okay, people might not really know that you are good at what you do. So they might not want to pay you, bring out money and pay you for writing something for them because they don't know if it's going to convert or not. So if you're dealing with your friends or your colleagues, you can strike a business with them. Okay, since you're not sure if this is going to convert or since you've not tested my work before, you've not seen my copy before, my copy has not converted for you before, let's do it this way. For each person that my copy converts, you give me 10%, okay? So it can also work so when you're starting. So you tell them, I'm writing this copy for you free of charge, basically, okay? Well, after not free of charge, but I'm going to write a copy for you, and you are going to both of us will use it, or you will use it and sell on your page. Whoever clicks and buys a product from this link or from this copy I wrote, you're going to pay me 10% of that person's money. So that can be a, a deal you strike with this person. Do you understand? So that can be a deal you strike with this person. So they get to pay. So if the product is 10,000 naira, and then you yourself convert and brings in one person, you're getting 1,000 naira from it. And that is it. So that is actually how it can work sometimes. And I had a business that that was the deal the person gave me. I did not go with that anyway, because I preferred to beat my own price, my customers, and make my own sales. I will explain that later on, okay? But this particular one I explained can be a way that works. You can get 10% or you can agree with the person 20% for each conversion, okay? So as the person now begins to see that things are converted, the person will trust you and want to write another copy for them whenever they want to sell another thing. So that way it also helps you build your portfolio because you can easily say, I wrote a copy for so and so company in 2020, in 2023 or 2021, and then it gave them so and so um, conversion rates. They were making five sales in a day before the copy, before I wrote the copy. But with my copy, they began to make 10 sales a day. So that's like what? 100%. That's like double of what they were doing. That's like 2x of their former sale. So that helps to build your portfolio. That helps to build your, your profile as well. Okay. So I believe I've answered your question, Salome. And you said, in your years of as a copywriter, have you had difficulties in convincing some group of consumers? Definitely. You would have challenges in con in converting some consumers we are going to talk about that when we are doing closing sales tomorrow and i'm going to share experiences with us as well there are some cost customers that you're going to call like you spend you even spend your airtime calling them to continue after everything they will still not pay okay they really have stubborn i know that they really have stubborn call they're people that will keep asking you questions keep asking you questions and you think that this person is willing to buy they will finish asking all the questions in the world they will still not buy you will say all the convincing words there are still times that those people will not convert. But it, you should not be afraid of hearing no's, okay? 
you should not be afraid, afraid of hearing no's. There are people that those things you do will not get to. So it should not in any way discourage you. There are many of them that it will get to. There are just few that it will not get to, okay? And most times, it's not because it's not getting to them. It's because they probably really do not have the money. Even if you turn them upside down, up and down, they only want to make inquiry. Their money is not available. Like, sincerely, the money is not available. So that's what will make them most times not to what convert. And in most cases for me, that has been the case. It's not because I was I didn't commit the person enough, but I found that in the long run that even if you turn this person up and shake them, Eh, they, that money will not come out. They don't have it. So in most cases, that's why they will finally not convert. But you have convinced them enough. That's actually why they even started you up and wanted to know about the product. Okay. So that is it, my dear. So finally, for tonight, I'm giving us this sentence and I want us to write it down. And what is the sentence? Take home, please. Write it down. Write it both. They are always noted. People buy because of emotion and justify with logic. People buy because of emotion and justify with logic. Many people buy a product out of emotion, out of love, out of want, out of desire, out of fear, out of prestige and greed. They buy out of emotion, but then they justify whatever they are buying later on with logic. Okay? So emotions first. That's why you have to learn, understand this psychology of, of human beings. You have to understand these emotional triggers and use it. Because emotions will work. That's why storytelling works. Storytelling just builds up emotion, either fear or joy or love or that sweet sensation. That's what storytelling does. So people buy because of what emotions and justify it later on with logic. So I am buying this lamp because, oh, wow, it is beautiful. It has to attract me first. And as much as I know that there are so many important things. It's going to help me study. I'm going to read what it says. This is now me logically explaining why I should buy the lamp. But the first reason why I will buy it is because it's beautiful. And trust me, if I see another lamp that is more beautiful than this one, I will want that one more than this one. So why? Because of what emotionally I'm attracted to this one. It seems beautiful. I seem to love it. I seem to like the contour. I seem to like the shape. I seem to like the build. Okay, the way they built it. So I am going to buy it because of what? Emotion. And later on, I will justify rewards logic. Oh, yes, it's beautiful, but yeah, actually, I bought it because I needed to read and all, all sort of all other reasons I will give myself. So, note this, and you will know success. You will know money. Once you know this, you will know money because it's going to help you focus more on getting to the emotions of people. Know what works, know what is going to trigger people, and it will help you make what many sales. So I believe I've answered all our questions tonight and I've said a lot tonight and I believe we've learned a lot tonight as well. I don't know if there are more questions before we call it a night. We have done every single thing. We have covered up yesterday's topic and we have covered covered up today's topic. So things you must do. I think the things I've not, I've not said explicitly, but I've actually touched it during during our during our uh, discussion okay so things you should not do i listed the different words you should never use avoid them okay you should never use those words then more things you should not do as a copywriter do not copy and paste people's work okay please don't do that don't copy people's work and paste it as your own copy never do that please it's very wrong okay do not use a spin and write what people have written just change the words and then use it as your own copy don't do that okay you can pile up what we call um what do we call it again so there is this file we, we put together things you can get samples from other copywriters what that people have written okay and combine it into a file then anytime you lack inspiration you can always check up that file and get inspiration from it and use it okay use the inspiration you get from other post copy and write your own but don't copy people verbatim okay don't copy people verbatim all right so these are things you should do as a copywriter are there more questions please ask we covered up yesterday's topics that we could not finish niching down and then we covered up today's topic so we've actually done so well and i think is and that is why we had an overshoot today because our classes should just be two hours but this is an extra 30 minutes because yesterday we did not have our 30 minutes. We had 30 minutes for our matric. So it took up the time we should have used to cover up for the lectures. So it should have been two hours. But we had extra time today because we were covering up the topics we didn't finish up yesterday. 
So tomorrow's class is going to be two hours and two hours on the dot, eight to ten, and we are done. So make sure you're here on time. Tomorrow we're actually looking at how to close deals, how to I think we're also looking at how to close sales, what to say to clients, how to retain your clients, and everything about clients and sales. Okay, that will be the last the last thing, the last day for anything marketing so tomorrow we should be done and we should know enough about marketing and by the fourth day we will now be looking at our copy how to write our copy by the fifth day we'll now be writing our first copy so i'm really expecting tomorrow and i can't wait for tomorrow to come because there is a lot that we are going to talk about okay it's more a practical thing what do you say to your clients what should you not say to your clients how would you close deals? How would you not close deals? What would you say when your client say, I'll get back to you? What would you say when your client said, okay, thank you and God bless you and end the call? How do you follow up? All those things are what we are going to be discussing tomorrow. So, 8 p.m., 8 p.m., 8 p.m. tomorrow, we are going to kickstart. Okay, any questions, please? I'm waiting for us. Any questions, any questions, any questions, any questions? If there are questions, please ask me, ask me, ask me. If you understood the class, say, I understand, I understand, I understand. Say something in the comment section if you understand. Say, I understand, so I know you understood. Drop some comments on the comment section so I know you understand what we all said today. Say, I don't have any question, or I understand, or... Yes, 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 I'm with you. Whatever, whatever comment at all. So I know we are together before we call it a night, okay? So let me hear us say something on the comment section. Must say it's been a beautiful night and we have really touched a whole lot. These are things that you will definitely not find anywhere in any copywriting class. But I took my time to break it down because it took me a lot to learn. I had many um, classes I attended and... After attending those classes, I still did not get a picture of what I wanted. So I had to go and do my own study. And I that's why I'm telling you, have your own book, okay? You do your own study and you write your own lessons down. It's going to help you. It's going to come handy when you need to write a copy. If I want to write a copy, I open my books and I have different, different inspirations from there. Things I've learned over the years. So it just gives me ideas on 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 what to write and then i put in my own creativity into it and write something beautiful yes there's what we call swipe swipe five that's what i was trying to remember i just remembered it now swipe files stripe swipe files are files that you can create to help you get motivation on days when there is no motivation okay swipe files are compilations of other people's work other people's copy okay maybe you see this advert somewhere and you love the headline it was so catchy you can just screenshot it and save on your swipe file okay so that on days when you want to write about cars lamborghini range rover you just go and click that swipe file and look at what has been said in the past or what have been written before by other people then you get inspiration remember you are not to copy other post work as your own copy no you get inspiration oh i love this headline i love the way he used his offer i love the way he used the hook and the and the call to action he gave so you just get inspiration from there and then use your own words and write your copy so we call it swipe files so from now henceforth start looking out for beautiful copies anywhere you see adverts as people are doing adverts on your social as you're watching videos online as you're on Facebook, as a, as you're on your social media platform, start looking out for swipe files. Start looking, sorry, start looking out for copies, beautiful headlines, beautiful things that that they use in the adverts, beautiful copies that you're seeing that is convincing you to even click and know what next. Screenshot them and save it somewhere in your phone so that when you want to write your own copy, you can get inspiration from them. Okay. All right, so Grace says, okay, she understands. Okay, that's beautiful. So I guess in the absence of any other question, we are going to be calling it the ninth. And I want to say thank you so much for staying up to this point. I trust we've learned a lot. I personally have also been, you know, my memory just keeps getting fresher and fresher. As I keep teaching you, it just keeps getting, you know, the, the whole knowledge just keeps coming back again and again. And it just makes it better for me. 
and i really hope you guys get to start practice and that is my greatest prayer for all of us is a prayer and also something i'm going to ginger us to do even in class from fifth or from the fifth day of this class because we are going to start practicing you have to start writing so i'm really praying that even before the fifth of this month of the fifth day of this class that we can start practicing on our own already start applying these things you can just look and say, okay, I want to use the emotional trigger of love to sell a pen to my friend. How would I write a copy? Okay. Love, pen, copy. How would I convince my my classmates to buy a pen that I'm selling? So you can just think about that. Give yourself a prompt and then you start writing. Write it and grade yourself. You can write and send to me as well. Okay. I could go through it and make corrections. That's one of the benefits you have for signing up for my class. One on one coaching, I still get to get your responses and make corrections for any mistake you make. Okay, so in the absence of any that we call it a night, thank you guys for staying up to this point. I really appreciate it and I love us so much. I would see us in tomorrow's class by 8 a.m. and until then, 8 p.m. rather, until then, make sure that you keep practicing, that you keep watching videos. We we'll go through this class again and get all the points that we've said. And prepare yourself for tomorrow's class okay so stay safe guys i'll see us let's have a wonderful night bye y'all bye y'all